uh, will open the workshop uh, on the budget, which is or the proposed budget that is uh, presented for 2007 and 2008. We have just received a updated um, proposal from the uh, town administrator. And Mr. Administrator, how would you like to proceed? Um, I would like first to go over with with you, with you and uh, the issue that you and I talked about this morning, Madam President, has been resolved. So there is time tonight. Oh, okay. Um, the other issue, um, you have the supporting documentation, but really most of the issues here are in the budget we go line by line are, are, are relatively simple versus I think the issues of some of the capital expenditures. Um, at this point in time, we are, and it's not, must be still sitting on the printer, we're short about uh, $1.4 million. Uh, if you look at what you would generate with a 5.5% tax rate, that would take about 658. There's a handout that's sitting in my office, so when I'll ask to take a break in a few minutes and when we can turn the cameras off while I go in there and get it. I thought I had brought it out with me. I'm going to bypass the editorial copies because most of, it, most of that has not changed. Has any of it changed? Very little of it changed. Okay. The editorial copy. Um, town Council. I think your budget is relatively straightforward. We were originally hoping to put $50,000 into your reserve account. It's at contingency, it's at 35 at this point. Obviously, that can go any which way you wish. Uh, as we go down to the town clerk's office, this is uh, Nancy's budget. Um, You'll notice that we are trying to put the line account items in numerical order so they're easier to read. So there still may be a, a, a typo in all of this. A lot of people have been looking at this and bringing uh, typos to our attention. Also indicates the number of full-time people in that. Um, Nancy is Nancy can speak to her own budget, but there's nothing there that um, town administrator's office. Um, the one full-time person, then we have administrative and one part-time person. The clerical floaters have been placed in other budgets that just haven't disappeared, but they were clerical floaters, but they essentially have been working at the DPW and over in code enforcement. So they shifted into the... I'm just shifting in to be more reflective of where, where the costs are. are. Yeah. Uh, I, you know, under the contract, it really doesn't matter. I can move personnel as needed, but for whatever reason, historically, they've been located here. Um, there is very little change other than computer services, uh, and what's happening is is that as we've been updating our computers, and we're spending more and more time money on IT. Um, You'll notice the townwide internet service is going down substantially because we sat down and negotiated with Cox for almost a 50% plus reduction in internet service costs. They, what they were doing is charging us by office versus by building. Uh, town hall operating expenses, this is where one of the biggest increases is obviously in the electric. Uh, building maintenance. Um, it is my proposal to move certain offices around to put all of code enforcement, the planning department, uh, wastewater commission, uh, all on the first floor and renovate uh, what we call the basement uh, so that people can come in there and get one-stop shop for like a customer service. Um, would also mean moving the treasurer's office back upstairs uh, over probably into where Mr. Ames' space was and literally refinishing the downstairs and moving some walls around and opening up a, a window into one of the walls so that it would be limited to who can just wander into to the offices. Uh, so finance and administration be on this, the main floor and on the basement or first floor would be 
code enforcement, planning, planning board, wastewater, and maybe even occasionally the fire marshal would be down here. Plus, we also would need to have the proper storage because we do use some of that area for storage, so we'd have to take part of it and turn it into a um, um, storage room for files. We'd also be looking at replacing some of the windows in the back of the building, too. Uh, most of them are virtually useless when it comes to energy-wise. Um, board of Canvassers, there's really no change. What? Now, if we have a special election, you know that could. Tonight. Right. I mean, obviously, we took into account that we're not having a, we should not be having much of an election this year unless we have a special election just to do the um, charter, charter review. But these are Nancy's recommended numbers that we're working with. Will the five thousand cover that? Well, because I mean, we that, that, that's something Nancy we. Town meeting doesn't cost as much. As well, I'm just saying, I, I think that's something we really should be plugging into the budget because we know we're going to have that election. It's not like it's it's not really planned. The special election you're talking about for the Charter Review yeah. Commission, yes. But because that's a special election, we wouldn't have all the, all the polling, polling places. places. Okay. We condense okay. it, and I think the 5,000 yeah. should cover Okay, that's what I want to make sure. Right. Um, under the... <laughs> The next one that gets a little bit more, probably more interesting, which is planning and community development. Um, right now it is proposed in this budget to take one of the uh, clerical floaters who is part-time, move them over into this part position and make it a full-time, and also hire a new inspector. Um, the, one of the issues that we have is customer service. Not that Mr. Gar Mr. Ames is doing an excellent job, it is the demand on that staff and the issues of code enforcement. We get more complaints that we're not out there actively enforcing the code and uh, Mr. Ames takes unfair blame in my opinion uh, because we're not proactive, we're simply reactive. And even though it is pretty much noted that the building industry has seen a slowdown. The office is as busy as ever. Uh, we're seeing more smaller projects that need to be inspected. Um, uh, what have you budgeted for that? Uh, Forty thousand dollars. rest is for the second full-time clerical. Right. Well, she's part of her part-time salary has been moved from my office over to her, over that. Her salary would be roughly about 32000 per union contract. So the 107 includes one of the ones you said were transferred. Right. Now, when we get towards the end of this presentation, when you're saying, well, what if you cut this, you'll see some of the those numbers come back out. If, but tonight is just to talk about sort of like what we saw last night. This is where we are at this particular point in time. Um, obviously, there's going to be more need for auto expense because we'll have two people on the road. Uh, the same thing with educational seminars. Um, we know that our um, software maintenance, we were just notified. If you, if you look in, your, in this booklet here that you have, you're going to see where it says Opal is at 1330. Um, we were notified today it's going to 1530. So we just automatically made the correction today. Um, boarding of buildings, this is the one account that is a very soft account. We Last year I don't think we spent more than $800 out of that account. So where he was asking for 12, I brought it down to 1,000. This is emergency board up? Or right, an emergency, an emergency board up. Uh, Why don't we recoup any of that from insurance companies? Well, that's, that's actually, um, 
Mr. Edwards, that's been a, uh, the chief and I were talking about this and, and this another issue very similar to this where we're using uh, foam and all of this to come up with the policy to go and try to collect some of this money or to levy it as a fine to recoup it. Um, I, thought, I thought we had an ordinance in the boarding of buildings where we did recover. You know, we recovered money on the boarding. And Gareth is how we're doing. Are we doing that now? Okay. Well, we, I, since I've been here, I haven't had an instance to do it. Yeah. But the ordinance does call for it. If we have, if if we, we send somebody, now. we send somebody a notice, you know, that a building's unsafe and they need to board it, and they don't do it within a period of time, we do it and bill them. That's my understanding. Gareth, you're welcome to come up here. No, that's true. <laughs> oh, okay. That's true. We just. I, I, I thought he had you gone. Just have, you haven't done it. We yeah. haven't used it. This yeah. is the several fires that we've had. Um, takes care of that. The, uh, <laughs> the people have been responsive and done it. Yeah. Um, and in a couple of other cases where we've had minimum housing shutdowns, uh, it's suffice to put a padlock on the door. Okay. So, uh, and basically, in the last couple of years, we haven't used the budget all that much. Yeah. And we end up transferring funds out of it to cover other shortfalls mm -hmm. or whatever. There is, this is not a, a line item that you're going to find huge amounts of money to offset budget increases. No, we know that. A curiosity. Um, well, this is going to come into a later discussion on revenue. So uh, I want to talk about how you recover and where you don't reflect it in the budget and where it goes directly into the general fund because we don't have a line item showing potential revenue source for this. Mm -hmm. uh, planning department. The, the big difference here is, as you may recall, we phased this position in. This will be the full-time salary plus a mid-year correction um, of uh, January 1st, January 8th of, of next year. The clerical represents the employee that is currently down there that was um, assigned to the department last year at one time. That person also was assigned to the administrator's office. Uh, this employee is also now qualified to receive longevity. Um, we're expecting more activity in this department. That's why we've increased material supplies and postal because we're going to have two people working out of that office. The, we're reducing the consultant, and this number could come down even more, but it's just a working number right now. They wanted to do a computer upgrade, and right now I've taken that out. Zoning Board of Review actually before we Before we pass, uh, I, I see a hand up. No? It just, it's not that big a deal, but the photocopy of lease is a contract, which is 15 pounds. So the thousand wouldn't cover the existing contract. Fifteen thousand that we have requested as a consultant was for the zoning rewrite because of the plan update, and it depends how much of that the new town planner will do. So there's certainly elbow room for that. Well, I know that Mr. Um, Spencer is already looking at that. Yeah. So, so that. we may see <laughs> some more sales. And any any consult any consultant that he may need to, to bring in to the system. Well, I don't know if there's, there's any work doing. I'm just, just looking at the planner thing. And somebody looking at this and not knowing the reason for it is going to look and see 40000 jump into 66000 I don't know if there's some way on that line to denote that the previous one was a partial year or something. But uh, just, just so someone's seeing that size to pop out. Well, what I want to do is, because um, we actually we are having trouble with the, the copier we, over the last couple of days, is when this goes out, I'll make note in the in the editorial comment that this position was hired part, you know, eleven technically was budgeted for eleven one, did not come on until November, so it's the first full year full year budget. I'm hoping just to clarify that, yeah. I'm hoping that reflected in as a footnote or as in the editorial comment. You know, so when this page opens up, if you if you remember how we as I said, we were having trouble with the, with the printer today, so we just decided to take it easy. But before when you opened this up, it actually opened up the editorial comment in regards to that page. The so people should be able to read 
and see in the planning and community development that the reason why the increase in the uh, salary of the planner is because it was it was partially funded for one year. That's <coughs> just to clarify. Right. That copy lease is going to go back to fifteen hundred. Right. We'll take it back. I you know I want to go. The problem is is last year we I think when I was look, looking at at some of these numbers the numbers had. Um, I, I want to double check that. I'm not questioning what Noel's saying. I mean, Noel knows his budget more than I do, but I, I will double check that. Yes. Yes, um, Madam Chair, the only one that's for two years in a row we've asked that that title be changed to advertising slash ordinances. I mean, it's kind of misleading when we come before you to advertise. We'd like to change that title. What's the, the, thing what's the title? Zoning ordinances. The zoning ordinances. The advertising advertising. for the zoning ordinances, the proposed changes. The other thing is, is the planning board being eliminated? I mean, we have the zoning board of review uh, down here. I'm not sure how, uh, if the planner is going to have carte blanche on the, the budget itself, or is it going to be still a, a counter signing of the accounts? As you know, in the past, We've been very protective of the professional technical services account because of old subdivisions, and I would hate it not to be um, checks and balances on the accounts. So I don't know how this is going to operate. It's just the um, I'm sure that we have not, but I'm sure that um, uh, the planning board and its chairperson will see to it that there will be a check and a balance on the uh, planner. Yeah, but we don't really address that in the budget per se. Okay, okay. we will certainly your voice is heard, but uh, um, if we get into that level of issue on each one of these, we will not get through it. So we need to at least get through the budget. I'm sorry. It's all right. We hear you. Board of Review, actually at one point we actually had brought this under the zoning official and had actually done the same thing with the planning department uh, with as, and the planning board, so it's not, I'd rather see less columns uh, versus the, the numerous columns, but as I said, this is a gradual phase in of, of a different approach. Um, this represents numbers that um, we basically have been almost been spending in the zoning board, which is obviously worked with through Mr. Gar Mr. Ames's office. Can I ask a question? I can recall Mr. Tights, and maybe this is a question for Mr. Ames, um, saying to us that there could be savings in stenographic services where uh, a transcript was not necessarily typed up, but it was taken, etc. Has that procedure been followed? Yes, it has. Okay. We no longer do verbatim uh, uh, minutes every every uh, uh, meeting. What we do are, instead of verbatim transcript, we do minutes, which are only sent to us in rough form. They go to Mr. Taylor who uh, reviews them and edits them, and then they're, they're distributed to the, to the board members. And then we make, we make the verbatim transcript available, but that's, that's charged for to individuals. Okay. So part of this is a back charge to uh, individuals, part of the six? Yes. But this is showing a, an expense line item, and then you're going to need, you're going to show a, a revenue line item to offset that. That's not how you've traditionally done it, folks. This is where we need to go. I'm not bogged down by tradition here, so. Okay. Okay. Um, if there's not any questions, moving over to courts and legal services. The town solicitor's budget. Um, represents uh, probably more accurately what has been uh, spent in the past. Uh, obviously his, his legal services agreement was increased this year 
when we used the $95,000 number, that was a number that he gave us or gave Mr. Souza to plug in, uh, even though it, was, it just went from 90 to 96, as you may recall, with your approval of his contract. That was a working budget number that he gave Dave last year. We only budgeted 44000 um, Right now, 75000 should be a pretty good working number. It depends on how litigious that year is. Could you know? Um, prosecutions represents the change in the law. I mean, a change in the policy that was enforced by the chief uh, judge of district court, which has been discussed with you. The legal and zoning issues is set, essentially that's the legal budget of the uh, planning board and labor council. Last year we reduced it substantially. Um, we have labor contracts starting to come up again. And also there is some money in there to assist in reviewing and updating personnel policy for the town of Tiverton. Um, municipal court, same. Probate court, the judge requested uh, an increase in his salary. He could be paid the same thing as a municipal court judge, and I mean that's where we're going. That's where he should be, sure. I mean, if that's your desire, I will so plug the number in. Um, well, if he doesn't mind doing it slowly, I have no objection to that. <laughs> well, he he just we didn't he didn't put a number in. He just kind of asked for something. So he asked for the increase. We put in the no, he only got 500. He was refused to increase last year. With the thousand, yeah. But he really does do way beyond what he's increased with. Um, under financial administration. Now, the treasurer, as you know, uh, by charter, submits his own budget, and there is a mistake in here that I forgot to fix, and I just it just occurred to me right now. I'm all it's not much; it's maybe a thousand dollars. So I've got to make that correction. I forget which line it is in right now. Now it shows here the continuum of a part-time treasurer and a finance officer, and obviously that's a decision that hasn't been made. But we just plug a number in to set, set a space holder. Um, there are two and a half personnel in that office, two full time and one part time. So I, I, this is a budget that is basically changed by the budget committee. The tax collection office uh, is one part time and two full time. So there is a part-timer working in there. Part of the salary comes out of the administrator's office, and part of the salary comes from the wastewater commission. Uh, very little change in that budget. Tax assessor's office uh, is a one full-time, two part-time individuals. Um, hello. It says two full-time. Full I say part-time, excuse yes. me, two full-time. Okay. That is correct. <coughs> um, the mileage has gone up significantly because, Mr. Frankly, he is out on the road a great deal more than our previous assessor. He has recently found uh, about 350 properties that were never properly inspected for um, permits that were issued for upgrades to their property. And we expect him to be on the road a significant amount of money. That, that could change that, that 3,000, maybe by 1,000 down, but not that much. He is, by the way, he uses his own car. He doesn't have a town vehicle to use. Education at seminars, he, uh, and I agree with him, is trying to invest more time with his staff to get uh, to make changes in the office, professional development. Uh, some of his op he's asked for a lot more money in his operating expenses, but based on when his current, we, I think he can survive forty nine hundred. Software maintenance is just the cost of the, the maintenance and the, and the contracts. 
Um, and then the pretty much the others are self-explanatory. The budget committee requested fifteen hundred dollars. We plugged that in last year. They requested fifteen hundred dollars. They took it out. Now, are they running? Are they running Opal? Yes. Why? Why? You know, I mean, if we went to an Opal system. Uh, to try to have two departments communicating with each other, meaning the building department and the uh, and the uh, uh, assessors department. I think if we got the same software and two computers, why are we spending two thousand dollars and fifteen hundred dollars, you know, for for the maintenance of a program that's a, a mirrored program? Are those the licenses, though. Some of it's licenses and yeah. some of it's maintenance. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, the, the license. I mean, we put the program in. You know, it, it's. You know, the user. Each yeah. machine updated and, up, and updates. They just thing to <laughs> I've looked at those uh, licenses. Oh, okay. License updated programs that come out, new new stuff. Yeah. Uh, no, one, of, one, of, one of the things we need to do, you know, 12 years ago, we, we started talking about getting a central system in here. Every year we look in the budget and we look at all of the money we're spending on these smaller individual PCs that every department has that aren't compatible with each other. We go crazy trying to get, you know, one department to be able to communicate with another department through the computer. Uh, you know, we were supposed to, you know, we, we tried to get a central system and I think we really have to take a, a need at that, uh, a look at that again. We have to look at what we've been spending for computers and repairs and... and there has been some networking done. I mean, um, at Garris, and tax assessor and tax collector are, are done that way. I mean, I've had some very informal conversations with the school department in trying to look at sharing their IT person and some of the cost, you know. I mean, you, I don't disagree with anything you're saying, but, you know, we have to have the individual who knows how to assist us. Um, the assessor does, to a degree, serve as our IT person. He does work with the person who comes in and helps yeah. maintain the the uh, the computers. It's not the perfect solution, um, but it's. I think if we look over our budget, though, for the last five or six years and look at the money we're spending on an annual basis on computers and so forth and the maintenance, we really start to need to look at a system for the town. I mean, the fire department should be able to communicate directly with this department. DPW, I mean, we need a system that links the whole town together. And and we really need to start looking at that. And I think the, the way to look at it is from what we're spending, you know, annually on this and what it would cost us to put a system, uh, you know. Well, I, mean, I could ask the school department if they would be kind enough to lend us their new hire. IT person to come and maybe give us some recommendations if, if the school department would be so inclined. I mean, we need, you know, I don't have the, the skill to no, ask no, the, the questions. I'll be the first yeah. one to admit that. We yeah. need to have the people to come in who can tell us what we can, we need to do versus also at the same time maybe take, even taking advantage of us. Yeah. I don't want to buy a, I don't want to buy a Cadillac when a Ford will do. I, I agree with that, but I, I don't want to keep seeing us buy, you know, the Kia that's yeah. going to be out of business in two years, and then we can't get parts <laughs> to fix it. So, I mean, you know, we're not talking about something. We're talking about, you know, we're buying, you know, whatever's out there that they can afford in the budget because they got $2,000 and they buy something. And next year, you know, when you're hearing it, well, you know, we can't use that software because we don't have a machine that will run that. And our, you know, we can't upgrade to this because it's that old. Well, well, you know, we're running that system. You know, computers change so much where, you know, you put XP in and you can't do 2000 or you can't do Millennium. It just doesn't take it. We have made some progress. Yeah. We have made some progress. I mean, yes, we, bought the, we bought a server this year because the server died. We, remember, that was an emergency yeah. purchase. Yeah. But the same, when we bought the server, then we found the computers in the tax collection office. We couldn't link them up without creating this very intricate bridge to do it and we ended up having to go out and buying new uh, not the full computers but the hard drives to make them operate uh, for that's what I'm talking that's what I'm talking about I'm talking about trying to get a system where each department's compatible with the other departments and things can be done without every time you want to try to do something oh is the here's the piece you need to make that happen oh here's the piece you need and well, you know, these links are going to... 
talking with it, if we can get the school department to uh, lend us the, yeah. the, the useful. To do that, you're talking about a lot of dollars. Yeah. But, but we, we need to have, you know, we, but, to, but to answer the question, we need to have it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. If it if it saves some of these charges, like the fifteen hundred dollars that's in the budget this year, was an arbitrary number that just got laid on us the year before last in the form of thirteen hundred dollars. They just said, okay, now we're charging a, uh, a an, account, an account service fee because evidently once every week or something somebody sits down at their terminal up there and checks to see if our files are okay or they respond to us on the telephone. And it, you know, I think we're being held hostage in, in, to a great extent. Opal's a good system, no doubt. But they've really sort of become a monopoly. They're like the only game in town. So I think if there's another way to go, if you can get an IT person in to say there is something else out there, and I don't know that, um, that, that might be worth looking at. I mean, because that's... I mean, if you can eliminate several of these $1,500 charges, that goes a long way to to at least paying for the the survey to see what we need. You know, but we could also say if we could do the same thing with our phone system. There is possibly ways to save monies on our phone system and have a better phone system in town. Uh, even though right now we still have have certain numbers plugged in, we have been talking with vendors about way to take the existing money and pulling it and putting a, a first class phone system in here versus buying the number of lines that we buy. There's a lot of things yeah. that yeah. that are being looked at. I mean it was the same thing when the question on the internet service and when I was looking at the bill and I said why am I paying for this this way and all of a sudden our vendor when we brought him in said oh no you can do it this way and the bill dropped in half. Sometimes you got to ask the question the right way to get the right answer. Oh, I, I totally understand that. I, I totally understand where we're coming from. But I'm just saying, I think there are certain areas here when we're looking for that long-term, you know, saving. Is we have to rethink how we're going to look at that situation. And I think this one, you know, is a work backward situation of seeing what we've been spending, you know, for all of our computers. Because you know, when you see them. And you're taking there's fifteen hundred dollars in this department, there's a thousand dollars in that department, there's two thousand dollars in this department. When we had the figure at the end of the year, and you look at you know, thinking back to when it was a forty thousand dollar figure to do the to do the entire town, you know, and everybody thought it was a ton of money. And we look back over that period of time, we probably spent twice that. In '96, uh, it was seventy-five thousand. Yeah. Okay, but, but, the point been made. Yeah. Let's move on. Right. Can I say something before we move on, Madam President? Absolutely. As I went through the budget. There were a couple of things that I saw, and switch around computers, let me, let me speak to that issue. Uh, every budget in here has money for, for uh, computers, or computer maintenance, or software maintenance, every one of them. Now, if we consolidated all those funds into one item, I don't know who would administer this, and maybe we can't for that reason. But the same thing with training and seminars. Every, well, there are a good number of, of budgets here that contain a request for money for training and for seminars and so forth. There again, that should be consolidated. I think we could, we could end up with a, a, a less costly budget because they would then be required to indicate what their plans are for the next year, not just throw in a, a number off the top of their heads. And, um, uh, well, there's a lot of management well, that goes along with this. Well, there's two ways of looking at it. You know, one of the things is to, is to take the budget and cost account where you're actually showing what it's costing you to run the department versus taking and shoving all the costs into, let's say, the administrator's office where he would be, whoever's the administrator here would be overseeing all personnel training, all HR services. Yeah, no, that wouldn't. And, and ideally, the way I would actually like it seen if I if I have the right people in here is where you'd actually take the town health care costs and dental insurance and and break it down and show it in each department so we have a real idea of what it's costing us to operate each individual department especially when it comes down and looking at those departments who can generate revenue um, that is over and above taxes in other words if the code enforcement department showed all of their costs, personnel benefit costs, it also adds greater 
argument to him to charge higher fees to justify why he's charging those fees. And you can carry this all the way down the line in a lot of your departments. Um, and that's what a later discussion is. How much do you want to be a fee-based government in terms of generating more revenue out of fees and taking some of the pressure off of property taxes? Right now, the approach has been more to deal with property taxes than fees. But if moving on, if it's all right with everybody, um, health insurance. Now, I know that there was a discussion last night uh, with the school department. I've been been taking this this particular number and backing down and actually recounting it and recalibrating it based on the number of employees we have. Now, I know the school department has said they're looking at cost benefit increases up to 19.9 percent. Um, I'm not, I, I, you know, we have taken our health care and dental and life and this year, for instance, the um, ASME agreement starts on July 1. They pay $250 more per family. And just so you know, folks, probably 20% of our policies are single policies, 80% roughly are family. So $250 for each ASME employee is going to be you know, kicked in. They're also going to have a, uh, an adjustment on their co-pays again this year. So we've been trying to help control insurance costs on increasing co-pays and co-shares. Co-pays at the doctor's office and co-shares. Last year in all the agreements um, that went into effect since I've been here, we bought down the insurance costs. So where we saw most, the school department saw a 2.1 increase, we actually saw uh, less, we saw a 2.2% reduction in health care costs because we changed the way of our our co-pays at the doctor's offices. Um, the other thing is, because the police union contract is not in place yet, if they do agree to some of the recommendations that so far have been in place as part of our discussions, they would see a reduction in the rate alone of 6% by increasing their co-pays. Plus their co-share is looking at increasing by almost $400 in one year for for single and family. So that's going to help hold some of our, our costs down. Um, the life, the, the, the dental insurance is capped this year. The highest it can go up is 5%. That was our agreement when we extended it. Um, life insurance has been increasing an average of 3 to 4% on average. The liability property and workers' comp uh, we were expecting a bigger hit last year than the, the price ultimately came in at $246,000. Uh, there's going to be some other changes and uh, that look like to our benefit. For instance, our property and liability costs went down. Our excess liability costs went down last year. Um, our workman's comp did go up. But one of the problems was is that an earlier uh, entry of salaries uh, in a previous year was wrong, so we saw an incredible jump. While I know the school board is looking at 15%, it is also based on our experience rating, and our experience rating has been very good this year on workman comp claims. Um, so, and that that's another issue. Uh, in terms of the pension contributions, the fire department, uh, we are seeing a reduced amount that we're going to need to match. Um, for instance, last year the firefighters was 18.97. Our contribution this year will go from 18.97 to 11.39. That's why there's such a huge swing in that number. Um, the ASME, and by the way, the firemen contribute 9%. Ask me, they contribute 7% per employee. This year we're looking at 7.01, and I think that was a um, 0.3% increase. For the first time in a long time, we are also going to have to make a contribution 
for the public works and they historically have been making a 7% contribution and it will be 2.55% this year. Um, the, the police pension, that number is still soft. We have not gotten our actuarial number back yet. Um, as you know, the pension board, um, Mr. Boland serves on that. They've updated the trust agreement. Now they're working on the pension plan document to get that up to date. And I know that uh, the board is looking at going out and um, working on uh, doing a new actuarial assumption uh, since that's not been updated for a number of years. Uh, we are, just so you know, in regards to the pension board, which is made up of Mr. Bolin as the council representative, the town treasurer, the fire chief or his deputy. Police chief. Police chief, excuse me. Um, and the president of the union or his representative and the town administrator. Uh, we are looking at people who are, have been on disability and if they deem necessary to have their um, medical exams updated so that we can make sure that they're still legitimately out on disability. Uh, Social Security, that's you know a salaries increase, Social Security increases. Now I want to talk about the next two line items, unfunded liability and employee special retirement. Historically, the employee special retirement has been essentially in the unfunded liability. And what are these employee special retirements? These are two agreements that the town has had for a number of years uh, that have been put placed in that line item. So it's not really been an unfunded liability item line item. It has been an employee special retirement line item. Uh, now I will tell you we have one little problem, a little blip in this. Somehow we've gotten out of sync where we're actually one year behind. So this year I'm hoping to do it internally to, to, to correct one payment. I could argue this line should be 33000 this year. I'm trying to do the correction in the current year. Uh, we got out of sync about three years ago where somehow we got a year behind. I haven't quite figured it out, but we're about a year behind. And I want to do a one-time correction. Is there any questions on the insurance? Yes. Yes, ma'am. Um, when we negotiated, we increased the co-pays for a variety of things, including emergency room. I think emergency room uh, co-pay now is $75. It depends on which agreement. The agreements right, change they, from agreements to agreements. Right. The ASME is, is 75 The fire is... I think it's. I, think, uh, let, I can tell you. That, that my question is: What do we have any um, uh, experience that our health care provider has given us as to how this is control costs? Or well, they have told us right true? off the bat that if, for instance, if we if the police have, are going from um, ten dollar doctor visit to fifteen. Fergie Care went from uh, $10 to $50 under their proposal. Originally, emergency room visits were $25, and we went to $100. And the thing with what they're saying is, if we can, we use the emergency room. Our employees use the emergency room far more than the average employees. The goal is is to get them away from emergency room care, which is very expensive, either into urgy centers or or going to see their doctors. Um, so yeah. have we seen a savings yet? Yeah. We won't know. Okay. Now, our experience rating is bad this year versus last year, but, and I think Robin did an outstanding job in talking about that same issue, Robin Reeser, who's kind of like my counterpart to a degree. Um, if we have one or two very sick employees or spouses or children, it can take and just blow our entire experience rating right out of the water. Um, we, our experience rating is joined with the school department and, and the town, and we get a, a, a joint rating. Last year, we had a better experience rating than the school department. This year, they're having a better experience rating versus us. But we're still five months into, five to six months into our our cycle 
So hopefully in about three or four months we'll have a better idea where we stand. And it could get better or it could even get worse. Uh, we also are participating in Muni Blue where um, the uh, Blue Cross will come in and explain to the employees how to better utilize their plans um, with the idea if they use their plans smarter, it'll save money and the town won't be asking for increases in co-pays and co-shares. But to give you an example, um, it was $10 when I first came here, $10 for doctor's visits, $15 for urgent care specialists, $15 for urgent care, and $25 for um, emergency rooms. That's not a big difference in cost, so if you needed medical care, you just went to the emergency room. And we're also making sure that the hospitals, when our people do go in there to urgy care, they're charging them for urgy care versus where a couple of the hospitals apparently say you go into urgy care and you get an emergency room visit bill. So we've had that conversation with Blue Cross. And actually the union people brought that to our attention. Any more questions? No, just an observation. As you look at the numbers, we spend a half million dollars more per year on insurance, dental, and life than we do on, on pension costs, social security, and all the accompanying uh, issues. Well, you actually spend more because your employees also contribute. Um, yeah. The employees this year are contributing $178,000 for their benefits. Two years ago it was 84, and they contribute $440,000 towards their retirement costs. That may make a difference. Uh, public safety, I'm going to ask the fire chief to come up. In, in fairness to the fire chief, he'll say that he needs every dollar here. I would Absolutely. not expect him to say anything less. Um, I think it's pretty self-explanatory. Um, as you, I think the question is, in this particular line item, more than anything else, because a lot of this is contractual, um, is one is the overtime account. You're going to notice it uh, was 115. We probably under budgeted that line item. That's why he's having trouble this year to meet his, his account. Um, if we tried to give everything that the union would like to have, I guess, in, or to try to meet every maximum that they would like to have for summer vacations and everything else, we could hit as high as 225,000. Um, Bob's department has had a number of uh, we've had what, two IODs this year. Yes, sir. We still have one that was still out and it's, shall be out for quite a while. And then we've had another op, another firefighter who's been out on on sick leave. Um, 180 is might be still high a little bit, but there's not much, um, and it's probably more of an accurate reflection. We had a very good year one year, and um, that has been coming back to haunt us. But we continue, as our firefighters get older, we're going to have more injuries. They're, they're just more prone to get hurt. The fire marshal won full time 10,000? Well, that's, that's, this is one of these accounting, this is where trying to phase in. I mean, originally Bob wanted to start with a full time fire marshal right off the beginning. You know, and, and, and this is, one of the, and I'm going to let Bob speak to the customer service issues in regards to this because he and I have had a number of discussions on. Go ahead, throw them under the bus. If I may. <laughs> no, no, ma'am, I, I will not do that. It's, um, when you hired me, one of my tasks and one of, the, one of the things that was brought to me, especially by Mr. Souza at the time, was um, problems with the fire inspections. And, and you have all been made very well aware of that, that that is an ongoing problem, trying to do it on a part-time basis. Um, Mr. Steckman has asked me over and over, can we look at it, see how we can refine that. The problem being is I only have, on a part-time basis, we're paying full-time wages, basically paying full-time for part-time service. And the problem comes when customers are coming in looking for their inspections. 
I just physically don't have the people to send to them to get out to them. Trying also to comply with the licensing requirements that um, Mr. Tice has asked that we must get these things done and all the regulations that come down from the state because the fire marshal still, all of our fire marshals still work under the authority of the state fire marshal. So as much as I want them to do certain things, he can come out and give an order and says, this has to be done by the state, which he has done. So the problem is we're falling a little bit farther behind. We have people that are coming in looking for building permits, trying to get their building permits accomplished and get them done. Again, we have to review their plans. We have to get them out. I think we need to look at our fee schedule a little bit more to try to help compensate some for that. Um, but again, we're holding people up on their loans and such, and I think we're costing the, the citizens themselves um, substantial finance charges because we just can't get this done so in a timely what fashion. What does the $10,000 do? Well, let me explain what that is. Uh, originally, Bob had asked for $50,000 under his budget request. What, and he still asked for $25,000 in some part-time. What I'd like to do, and, and, this, and the part-time number and the, and the 10000 for the full-time may change, is to do what we've done with a couple positions, phase them in <clears throat> fiscally, instead of planning on them being here the first month, first day of the new fiscal year. Um, this is some philosophical decisions. That, are we going to... Are we going to raise our fees? Are we going to raise our rate residential inspections? I mean, these are the same folks who are calling us and almost demanding or begging, depending on where they are. Can you get up here on? I need to. I need to get, get up here because I need to go to settlement on Friday. Now, Bob has sent out letters to the realtors recently again to remind them that inspections are done. What Wednesdays? Wednesdays are the residential residential smoking inspections. Problems. But we still get these, either the, and I'm not trying to blame anybody, we're getting these last minute and we're trying to be customer service oriented. So, and this is a service that is over and above the normal service that you should expect in your tax dollar. And the question is, should we be looking at saying, if you need this, you're going to have to help pay for it. And, and some of these could be offset by increased fees here. Uh, Let me ask you, this is, you, I'm sorry, yeah, if I might. you indicated that these, these things that we're talking about are state mandated, uh, uh, the fire marshal personnel and, and, and their function. Uh, my question is, how much are we being reimbursed by the state for these state mandated uh, actions? It's, it's not totally an unfunded mandate. What they are is that they are requirements that under state law, certain things must be done. The marshals and the municipality assumes part of that responsibility to do that. And again, this is where Mr. Tice has come in because as the Board of Licensing, we have to perform these inspections for the licenses to make sure the town is covered for its liability, okay. which takes away my, my inspectors from some of the things. If the town, if the state comes in in a certain amount of time and tells us that these are going to be requirements that need to be done and they are unfunded at that point, then they throw it back. I'm running into the same exact thing now with uh, EMS, where EMS is ordering us to do certain things, which are going to cost me money. But again, they're saying we tell you certain enough in ahead of time that your responsibility to take care of it without the funds. Correct. Well, uh, when when we do when we do inspections, though, we we've gone into most businesses in this town who hold licenses, and we've done thorough in, in, inspections. We've you know actually closed some businesses down because they haven't met our fire code and so forth. The next time you go do that, it cannot take you as much time as it did to bring them up to that code. They, were, they met the code last year. There's no changes in the code this year. You go in there, and it's a walkthrough. You are correct, Mr. Bowen. It is not as fast as, as it has been in the previous years. However, right now, um, I'm getting complaints from a certain section of town that I am arbitrarily avoiding inspection in another section of town and the physical reason. I just don't have enough time to get my inspectors down there. One end of town is telling me I'm, leave, I'm, I'm picking on them because we go in there because they come up on licensing. Another end of town is saying, well, we don't get, we don't get picked on at all. So I'm trying to equal this out. It, it, it but, but my, my, my point is some of, this, some of this stuff should be leveling off and easing itself. I mean, we went through the period where there was a bunch of different 
you know, fire codes came down because of the station fire, and there was all these new mandates people had to meet, and people were upset because this year you came in there and told them X, Y, and Z, and they did it, and next year you went in there and say, now you've got to do A, B, and C, and, you know, they kept spending money and spending money. By now they're all, they should all be, and hopefully everybody's going in there and giving them the same information, each inspector, so that, you know, there shouldn't be a, a lot of things. And, and these companies have spent their 40000 on alarms and 50000 and whatever it is and they got you know all their exit signs lit and everything's done because now the guy should be able to walk through there and some of these licensing inspections should take almost no time it, almost you know it's a time to drive there and drive back well, and so you can schedule a lot more of them in the same period of time and I just find it, you know, we're, we're going to do fire marshals and, you know, it's just, it's adding, it's adding people to a department that first, you know, our overtime numbers are out of whack, uh, you know, we're having a problem with this. And, you know, I just, well, I, I, I just, I, I just seem to have some problems with keep wanting to add people to the department. Well, let me, let me, let, let's, I understand the concerns about adding employees. I don't disagree. The issue at this position, if we're going to add, is, is potentially a position that be, could be covered if we can work it out by fees, that it would be a self-funding position. Um, in, in a lot of ways, the lady, who, uh, Judy, who works for the, uh, the chief is not just a secretary, she is the billing clerk for, uh, in, for you know, Part, uh, third party rescue, fire rescues. The, the problem that with new construction, you've got to have fire marshals to review plans. As we have more new construction, some of that could be recovered there by reviewing the plans exactly. and, those, and those fees. Um, as properties sell, and that's where we've had some of these residential issues, even, and, and and let's face it, we, we cannot ignore the station night uh, fire issue. The fire marshals are much more cautious and much more careful that, that things are being you know done by a punch list that we are we are so that you walk in there and yeah, it may not take you as long, but you still gotta go through the punch list and make sure you review everything versus just going on the assumption, well I know this guy, he says he's did he did it. I better go and check. I'm not saying it's the perfect solution. But it was done. The, no, no, what I'm saying, it was done. The guy went through there. We issued the license last year because he met, you know, I, I didn't rip it out. You've made your point. I, I, okay. uh, Paul is uh, very rested that he wants to uh, speak. So. <laughs> <laughs> Having the opportunity to see both sides of it, in all fairness to the chief, the inspectors not only do they have to don they, they they just don't go out and do the inspections when there's new construction for, for not only for for residents they don't only have to now they have to look at the plans for the new construction on resident on residential they didn't have to do that before now they have to you know at one time all they did was go into a house when the house was built go in and look and make sure there was smoke detectors inside the house. They don't do that now. Now they actually have to look at the plans for a brand new house and stamp the plans of the house. I don't care, you know, any house that's built, they have to certify that. When the house is constructed and they're going for the certificate of occupancy, they have to go in there, they have to sign off on that so they can get the smoke detector. So that's that's already two inspections right off the bat that they have to do, the plan review and the smoke inspection. That's on new construction. On a pre-existing residence, they have to go in on, on an existing home for a sale, they have to go in and do a smoke inspection. So that's another one they have to do. On a commercial side, there's a whole together different thing altogether. There's, and I've seen that where on new construction with commercial, there's multiple meetings where they're going on and on and on for all the different phases. If I didn't see it myself, I wouldn't have believed it. And, and the way the laws were constantly changing, you know, that you actually almost have to go out and hire a company to follow you through it because in all fairness to the guys in the town, like every other fire department, you know, they, they try to keep up to them and, and, and 
You, you almost have to be an expert and do it seven days a week, 24 hours a day to stay up to it. So either you li live and breathe it to be an expert, in, in all fairness. <clears throat> and, and now, looking at those two lines together, my $50,000 question is, putting collective bargaining agreement aside, do you have to be a firefighter to be an inspector? Yes. That, that's the question. Why? Go ahead. No, no, it's Chief, what, what's your plan to do time right now? We are we are allowed one week. One week. One week. We try to we try to get it out of stuff. I'm sorry. What are you actually getting? Again, it depends upon how the schedule is worked out to get our marshals in. It could be three, four days. Sometimes it has been up to a week. Plan review? Yes. That doesn't include though. Uh, for instance, the schools, which have, you know, as, as every change order has come, there's been a lot of time. I mean, how many hours have we been working? You, you guys been working on the state of Ranger? At least, well, Ranger we haven't got yet. We've still been working this just on the, this the new school. Well, again, we haven't gotten the, the latest batch of plans for that but we we have at least 50 to even more maybe 60 hours just into those plans alone which again the school plans take my inspector who does most of my plans away from because it is a specialty to and look at the and plans and you do and you do bill for it in all fairness we're going to move on for it because we're not going to stay here all night but you do bill for it it's not something that's you know there there are different levels we we've got it in place we do bill at different levels for it which i'm sure you know we can go into it when you're looking at income later on we bill at different levels. Nobody gets a free smoke inspection in this town. Right. Nobody gets a free plan review in this town right. either. And I think we can probably move on when you're looking at income later on. But so it ain't, it ain't just moving on. It's not a freebie. And you look, it's we not paid. A freebie. We we budgeted forty five thousand two hundred dollars last year for fire marshal inspections. Want to know why? Because the guy got paid overtime to be an inspector. It wasn't done during his regular time. We were paying for it. Okay, so no, forty-two thousand, forty-five thousand two hundred. Next year's line item is forty thousand dollars proposed to pay a guy time and a half to do the inspections. Why can't the inspections get done when we're paying somebody time and a half? And as you said, now we got that same issue that we got fees come back probably going to the general fund. But we take every year we're taking six hundred thousand, five hundred thousand, four hundred thousand, whatever the number is that that seems to be generated that goes back to offset to offset taxes from the budget, and I bet you we're going to find that when we look at these numbers, these are the numbers that were actually taken where things are coming back in from all of these things dumped into the general fund that go back in to offset. But not, not now, I will tell you, some of the numbers are not offsetting because we haven't addressed them for a while. No, no, I'm not saying, I'm not saying the total number, but I'm saying that some of the offset to the budget number is coming from the revenues generated from some of these things we're doing here, but we don't have it, which is doing what, and what's closer to covering itself. But, you know, I'm, I'm looking at a budget here where we're going to phase in. We kept $40,000 in the budget to do fire marshal inspections, and we're going to start phasing in at $10,000 to hire a fire marshal. You know, and, and then eventually, but, eventually, one's going to get to fifty thousand. So we already got the fifty thousand in the budget. But, 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 uh, dishonest. yeah. There's, well, I think it. You know, there's a lot of ways we could have, we could have, we could have gone back and said, okay, done the original proposal, which would have been, and in all fairness, when you make this change, there are some guesstimates here. We don't know. We don't know how much part time we might have to use, mm -hmm. but. We would be looking at 75.6 versus 45. So you're looking at roughly a 30,000 increase. This is something that, frankly, I'm trying to get a sense of where you might be interested in going and let Bob and I work on these revenue line, uh, uh, line items. My goal was not just to bring people on just for the sake of service. My goal was we're going to bring people on. They're going to be generating money to offset the cost of their salaries. I mean, it's the same thing with code enforcement. We're bringing the people on, not just to simply say, 
I need another person would actually produce revenue. Well, I understand that. But when you look at this, if you're talking $50,000 to have a fire marshal, we're probably looking at that in salary. Then we're looking at an entire benefit package. We're looking at health insurance for another individual at whatever that number is per person of $1,000 a month, another $12,000. We're looking at the retirement. We're looking at 9% contribution on the retirement of $50,000 salary. We're looking at the set, uh, another 7% here. We're, we're talking about when we add a person like that, we're probably adding pretty close to you know uh, $90,000 to the budget. And that's, and, and, I don't and that's exactly why when we look at the fees, and that's exactly why we had this mentioned earlier when uh, Mr. Costa asked Ask the same question. We really should be reflecting these numbers for benefits in these individual departments. We've never done that. We're not ready to get there. I don't have the personnel to assist me on doing that. But that's where we need to get to. Because it's right. If we're only saying we're generating fifty thousand dollars in fees, and all of a sudden we bring a full-time person in, then we better make sure we're getting either raising those fees to, to equalize the ninety thousand dollars or we stay with, with, with part-time people and, and we're just not as customer-friendly, service-oriented. I mean, that's the question. And I hate... Go ahead. <laughs> Under the proposed, uh, the requested amount is the $50,000 full-time position and there's still the $25,000 line above the inspections. What is, if there is a full-time person with $25,000? There are certain aspects of... Um, of the fire inspections that have to be done by a licensed individual. That individual must carry a license for fire alarm per se, for our radio fire alarm boxes that we have, all the fire alarm systems in town. Those plans must be reviewed by that licensed individual. I only have one person who, who does it. Our fire marshals can do a residential single fire alarm smoke detector coven. Has to do the commercial plans when they come in and, and the such. He may, he may not. I, as of right now, I know I only have one, so it's. You know, we we set that as a no qualification. But if he was, that would that twenty five thousand still be needed? We could cut it down. Yeah, I mean, we reckon this is a number. These are numbers that have variables. Some variables to place. <laughs> If I may, Madam President, there's one other area that I, I just would like to mention. Um, if we go to 109 EMS incentive, that is wrong. That's supposed to be a that, that that's a mistake. That number should read fifty thousand five hundred and twenty dollars. And that should carry. There's, all there's the way an across. inversion in my request, and then there is uh, a mistake on the recommended aspect. That is per. Yeah. Yes, that is per contract that is required, and that is the exact calculation that would be needed. That would put me seven thousand dollars short if I go with that as is. That is, that is a correction that needs to be made. Um, okay, I, I'm going to move on, and I'm really hesitant. But at some point, would you just kindly inform us as to what the ten thousand does? Is it a two month? Is it a three month? Is it? It's about. It's, no, no. It's, I mean, is, is I want to move on. Is okay. that overtime for that? Is that what that ten thousand is? Is that kind of like overtime to cover the other? <laughs> no, that would be a, a regular a salary to okay. cover. At some point, because we're going to be working on this budget the overtime for. Is the one this is not the last night, folks. This is sort of the. <laughs> um, the opening salvo. A number of things to. Um, now, raise. Bob's operating expenses, you're going to notice if um, are up almost when you go to page nine and you look at it real quickly, the bottom line where it says total operating expenses 216 is showing 272. You know, one of the issues that has, I'm not, we have been become the experts of doing carry forwards. My goal is to wean ourselves away from doing carry forwards and trying to get more realistic in our line item projections. Uh, also, when I do an adjustment on some of this recommended, I've gone back and looked at history on these accounts um, to, to better understand them, especially how we finished last year, to see did we really budget, we historically budgeted enough, or we historically low, and then we do a transfer. Um, it's, this is not going to be fixed in one year, but I think we've made a, a, a pretty good move. Um, yeah, we can probably trim some more money out of this, but I, at 252, which I guess we've already transferred, you've already released, what, at least 35,000 carry forward this year. Mm -hmm. um, 
if you take 216 and 35, you're really at 252. Um, so just to give you an understanding, I know I know the chief's going to want want to talk about his capital equipment later on. I just have one, chief. What, what, sure. Radio maintenance, ten thousand dollars. What 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 would you expect to be fixing for ten thousand dollars? I just is right, that the, right now the just, cost of our portable radios are uh, current radio replacement is seventeen hundred dollars per radio. Okay. And if one goes down, I'm also looking at the radios that are in the trucks, uh, lapel mics, batteries for that, antennas, all the little in consequentials that go with that. Okay. And. Um, it gets it runs up pretty quick. Right up. Yeah. And vehicle maintenance, yeah. the chief did ask me to change that today to small equipment. Oh yes, sir. Um, thank you. Small equipment. Account six uh, forty eight, all the way at the bottom of page yeah. eight, is labeled wrong. Well, we we changed the name and he recommended well, another, another it's name. Not, it's not for vehicles. Another it's name. For small equipment, such as our chainsaws and our circular saws and hand tools and lights and such as that. That's what we buy those items out of. And he also expressed concern on page 933 under the second account, 669. Um, he really feels his medical supplies should go back up to 1,000. And as I may reflect that as a working budget, because as we said, as the president said before, we're going to be talking about this again. Uh, they are having more mandates again um, and supplies. You all received the state mandate report that I left in your mailboxes, to, you know, and, and we, I've asked all the departments to look at it to try to assign a dollar number where it may or may not impact them with these new mandates. Yeah, that, that document that you gave us, uh, I believe it indicated that the state legislature uh, appropriates $300 million a year for reimbursing mandates, and that only something like 16 or 17 communities have taken advantage of those reimbursements. So they're saying, well, if nobody wants them, we'll just cut them out of the budget. And so I'm saying, because we're such a small organization, some of these things get overlooked. But if it's a state mandate and the funds are available, you don't go to the fire marshal for them. You go back to the municipal affairs office or wherever it is, those funds are controlled. Well, that's why that's why we're doing exactly what we're doing. I'm asking the departments yeah, to, evaluate, yeah. to evaluate it, yeah. and if we can put if we can put a, a dollar number, we'll send that information back to the state and saying this is how it's affecting the town of Tiverton. You know, we're we're doing exactly what they've asked us to do. So the departments have been given that information. A couple of departments have said there's no impact on us this year. So hopefully we'll be able to have a, a, a reasoned response to some of the concerns. I know that Mr. Carroll and Poland have brought up occasionally on, on these state state mandates. And a former a former person sitting there in Mr. Edwards' place, Councillor Leonard. Madam President, I don't wish to believe it. I know you wish to move on, but if I may just quickly explain medical supplies, what they are for you, maybe give you a better understanding. Because we are a border community, most of our rescue transports are into Fall River, into Massachusetts. If we were to transport to hospitals within Rhode Island, everything we use would be covered, would be given to us by the hospitals, the, the HIPAA and through the Rhode Island Hospital Network would, would reimburse. They would give it right back to us as we go to them. Massachusetts does not have such a policy. So when we go there, we have to buy a lot of our medical supplies ourselves, our medications, our drugs, all these other things. Sometimes we do get them on a one-for-one -one basis. We don't always do that. It depends on who's in the pharmacy at that day. So medications, drugs, soft gauze, different types of things like that all comes out of this account. We try to re, you know, we try to recoup that when we bill through on our medical. But again, that money goes back into the general fund. I don't see that here, so it does leave me with some place to have to get my medicines. Okay, chief. For revenues, I think for revenues to go into the general fund is proper, and it's also proper to have a legitimate account here that might cover the cost for that. Oh, absolutely agree, you, Mr. Coster. I just wish to clarify that a little bit for you so we can understand it. Okay, yeah. Um. Moving on, if it's all right with the police yes. department. Yes. Thank you very much. Um, just so you know, this there are 28 full-time uh, sworn police officers. Um, we have call center operators and dispatchers. That's historically how it's been looked at. I'm going to combine that to eight because that's really the call center operators. We have a full-time mechanic and a full-time police 
uh, secretary or the administrative assistant to the chief, essentially. Now, in the call center operators are also our per diem folks to help try to control some overtime in that department. These are operators who are called in and paid a per diem uh, flat rate. Um, non-union. Non-union. It, it's a it's a rolling number. It sometimes as low as one. I think we've had as many as six. Uh, we occasionally will go out and advertise. You know what usually happens is they get their kind of their foot in the door. We do some training. Then when later they like it, and an opportunity opens elsewhere, they go. Where it's they're not getting enough work and it's not enough part time work for them. Uh, by the way, all these positions are contractual. Um, that doesn't mean somewhere in the future we need to take a look at some of this issue. Glenn, Glenn what about the school officer's position? Is this the first This year? is not in here, and I will tell you why it's not in here. I'm trying to find out. I've got a call into the feds. This was originally a three-year grant. Um, the way the paperwork reads, it should run out in August. But that's not three full years of, of grant money. And I've asked the police department to try to figure out where the responsibility is. We've also talked to the school department, and I, Mr. Rerick and uh, Robin, to sit down. And this may be part of your discussions next week if we have a, an answer. And I, I need to, I know I've got a couple of school board members. Are we meeting next week? Okay. okay. We, are are sure. we are meeting on the 16th. Yeah, that was agreed. That was agreed. Um, to uh, I walked into their the house. Or ours? They want us to go to their house. Seven, okay. Seven o'clock. Okay. Yeah, Denise is going to call Louise and set it up. <laughs> okay. The, the, this one one part of the discussion was to um, have them pick up seventy five percent of the cost and for us to pick up twenty five percent of the cost. I know they haven't budgeted for it, and we haven't budgeted for it yet. Uh, but I think this is one of the topics of discussion that we need to have uh, with the school department. Um, just so you know, that individual does not technically count as a police officer in terms of manning, yet he does provide, I mean, I think everybody recognizes Officer Cabral does a fantastic job, but he does not count as part of the manning in the department. And what is this school patrol? The school patrol is the patrol crossing, cross, crossing, crossing guards. guards. Oh, okay. That's listed That's separately, isn't it? Three of them, yeah. Yeah, yeah school patrol, 7200. Okay, are there any uh, initial questions? I will tell you, this, this is one of the, this is one of the, another area of the budget where there was a miscalculation when the budget was submitted last year of about $70,000 and it's been corrected in this year's budget. Uh, operating equipment expenses, um, you know, this is, the department's done the same thing where they've, um, uh, have done power reports to help. There's not a huge increase if you notice in between um, last year's appropriated and this year's appropriated operating expenses. And some of that's fuel. We've been very blessed and um, very fortunate that uh, fuel has been in our favor. Um, but we are looking, we're, um, we're trying to put an average cost of somewhere around $3 a gallon for gas and two ninety for diesel. I mean, we may I may have to look at my crystal ball again when it comes this spring, and maybe you might save some money there. But I know when it was hitting over at 255 a gallon at our cost, I was getting a little jumpy. Right now, I'm I'm ahead of the bet with Mr. Webster on this. Well, I think you got your I think you got your numbers backwards. Though diesel is more expensive than gasoline. I know. Well, at one point, diesel wasn't. Now diesel is much more expensive, and we may have to make that adjustment because I know the fire department uses a lot of diesel, and so does Dave's fleet uses a lot of diesel. Quick thing: the uh, longevity of a twenty-five thousand dollars spike in that. Um, 
because of the officers going up to the next level in terms of experience. In one year? Yeah, we have a number. We have our officer. Yeah, in other words, you could have you could have somebody who, let's say, longevity was a thousand dollars with four years and goes to five thousand dollars at the next. You know, so in other words, you could have a thousand dollars, fifteen hundred dollar jump. You know, and you could have four people hired in the same year, so you could have four or five people jumping at the same time, and you know, another one of those contract costs that you we we had needs to be looked at. And, and in fairness. Um, while we've had openings in the department, you have a large block that have been there for a number of years, and sooner or later that block's going to hit where we're going to go into the retirement pool, where they're going to be, um, you know, our, our costs are going to continue to rise. I mean, there. Um, I think the difference is that we have worked at your direction and the staff is to hold the salary increases down to try to control our overall cost of uh, salaries are averaging between three to three and a half percent increase. Um, most of the union agreements are either at three to three and a half percent depending on, you know, each agreement is, is slightly different. Uh, that's it I have. That's all I have for the animal control. Um, not much difference there. Arrest now, arrests are up and prison meals are down. Congratulations. <laughs> I understand that. I understand that. I don't get it. It's no big deal. <laughs> arrests are up, meals are down. Um, animal shelter services contracts, my understanding is getting ready to come up for renewal. That could be a number that could change. That's where we contract with the local shelter. Uh, Harbor Master, um, there's a slight increase in his salary. He has not had an increase in anything in the last couple years. Um, we've tried to put some a little bit more money for assistance, and these are per diem people who go out and provide additional assistance. Just to give you an example, the entire budget of the Harbor Master is covered and then some in fees. I'd like to go back just really quickly. I wish it stopped saying that. We, we, we received fees for We've got nothing to do with this item also no way. Not as much, not not that much. No, we do have licensing. We do have uh, fine. The the dog pick up the I know, but unfortunately, Mrs. Durfee's dog's not getting out like he used to. <laughs> <laughs> Moving right along. How much of well, in the car. <laughs> Should I not go in the tax office? Okay, moving uh, okay. along to hydrant service. Hydrant speaking services. of dogs. Hydrant service. <laughs> <laughs> that's, not, that's not what it's about. <laughs> uh, this is, once again, another issue that's a very sensitive subject to either one of these water districts, and I don't mean to laugh. I don't know where this number came from, uh, the 750 that we have historically been giving them, but that does not reflect the costs that we put on those services. Um, and I think the fire chief can also speak to that. We need to have constant flow checks. We need to have these hydrants tested for flows and checked to make sure they work. And I know the North Tiverton Fire District submitted a budget this year to me of, they have 349 hydrants in town. And you'll see the backup material in there where I think the lowest is a hundred dollars that's where the number came from I know that bottom line should have we've gone and, and had this conversation you know they're paying for this water they're paying Fall River when we flush our ask them to flush their hydrants to do flow checks they're very resistant because they operate like everybody else does on a very very tight budget this would I think help us have a better working relationship with, we have a good one, but to improve it, I guess you should put it that way, with the North Tiverton Fire District to get them to do more flow checks, which will help in our eventually in our ISO rating, which also will help affect, have an impact on your fire insurance. But I'm going to let uh, Bob speak to that. Part, part of the situation that I've run into with the, the water districts is the uh, 
again, when we are going and requiring certain people for sprinkler systems and such, there has been um, problems. We've had to come back with calculations. The water district says there isn't enough water to provide to those sprinkler systems. I go before the Board of Appeal and Review. They mandate me to go out and do tests on it. I call a district to tell them I'm going to have to do tests because it's mandated, and they basically tell me, no, I don't, I can't do that. But again, it is right. When we do flow test hydrants, we do that. We are using their water. We are, um, you know, taking away revenue from them. I, I think it would be a good idea at least to help them maintain the hydrants a little bit better so they are in operating condition. No. I, I think <laughs> some of that cost, like when you do, when we have like a sprinkler permit issue, you can't recoup some of those costs? Not on that. They, they will come out and they'll tell you that it's an engineered study, which they'll do off a computer-generated system, but we need an actual flow test. I'm not allowed to charge by that. And again, uh, I don't know if the so many hydrants that have to be flowed to get an accurate flow test. I'm not sure if that's something North Tiverton could come back and ask for. Well, I think one of the things we need to do is develop a better relationship with the city of Fall River because on some of these issues, you know, it's a, a, an unintentional consequence of having to check hydrants and so forth. And I think if you can show them I'm doing this and here's the thing, there should be some type of reimbursement, you know, uh, I'm saying a, a no charge to them for a certain, you know, gallonage situation. I, I don't think it's, it's going to hurt the city of Fall River, uh, you know, I mean, I think Fall River would rather have you doing something like that than be a third party in a lawsuit when a hydrant didn't work and it didn't work because we didn't flow tech it because they were going to charge us for the water. You know, there's, there's issues that put everybody at liability. I really do think we need to develop a better relationship in certain areas with the, with the city because we do a lot of business. Right you know with the city and this is one area that probably needs you know I mean I know your plates full Glenn but I mean it's something that we have to look at down the road of uh, see if we can establish something with the you know we, we do a lot of business you know on, on both ends on receiving the water and giving it back to them so I mean you know we we really need to because we've had situations and I think everybody in this room knows about situations where you plugged into a hydrant and turned it on and it didn't work you know, and there's serious consequences for those kind of situations. Or as you were talking about, that sprinkler system, where you're telling a business that they have to put sprinklers in, and North Tiverton says you got to put in two hundred thousand dollars worth of piping because we don't have, you know, the flow. Exactly. And exactly. those situations aren't helping uh, either. So. But getting back to this number, and I don't disagree with what's been said. The number is artificially low is a kind way of putting it. We've got to figure out what the real number is. They gave us a number. I just plugged a number and I could art probably and Stone and Wood Bridge, I've not asked them how many hydrants they have. They could have two hundred hydrants and we may want to do a ratio in the difference. But clearly we need to start Okay, but there's some other there's some other situations here that North Tivenant has to look at in terms of the water district. The water district is allowed to tax every property within the district, whether there's a structure on it or not. And their situation is we're taxing it because we provide fire protection, meaning the hydrants. So every homeowner that's a resident of that district is paying for their hydrants. So they are already paying North Tiverton and Stone Bridge because they're both ta they both have powers of taxation to run their department. So then to turn around and tell you as a town that, you know, because the fire department's going to use that hydrant, you know, we've got to pay them again for the hydrant. I, I think we really have to take, this is not one that they haven't got a claim that they raise some monies from, you know, taxation of every property. And if the line's in front of the house, whether there's a building on it or not, that piece of land is taxed. And all you're going to put out is a grass fire, which means you intend to use some water and you're charging me for the use of that water. So I, I'm, I'm being charged as a resident in North Tiverton, and people who live in Stonebridge are being charged the same way. So I, I think we, you know, you're right. There needs to be discussion on these issues, but they're not left out there holding the bag. The, uh, uh, and in furtherance of that, I was surprised to see even the request, because as we, as the town does a statistical leave out, our taxes to Stonebridge and to North Tiverton, they go up pretty high. Yeah, so, um, in fairness, and I guess it's because I have been working with North Tiverton on a project, as you well know, 
and trying to understand their financial problems and looking at, at their numbers and and how much debt uh, ratio that that they're facing. Um, I understand where they're coming from. I understand the problems that they're having, and I understand the demands that we're we're making on them that probably haven't been made in the past. And I'm trying to come up with a fair and equitable solution. I don't disagree that maybe we need to have a conversation with um, Fall River if they could give them a credit of X number of gallons so that we can do these proper checks, which would bring some relief to them because for Every 100 cubic feet, they pay $2.14 uh, for that. Um, and they're stressed a little bit. So I don't disagree having a conversation with Paul that may also benefit too. But I wanted to reflect, these are part of our discussions because they said, well, why don't you do what other towns do that have private water authorities, and this is what they're paying, and that's how the, doc the discussion began. No, I understand that, and then you have to ask them the other side of that question is where they have the private, you know, water, is those water districts allowed to tax the residents? I mean, there's a number that they're generating other than the, the sale of water. You know, they're covering the sale of water at $2, and then they're covering, you know, their infrastructure and so forth with the taxation that they have. And the taxation, you know, is, the, is the, I understand, their borrowing power, and I understand the need to do it in the way they do because they have to have fixed numbers in order to borrow money. And you can't borrow money on the sale of water because it's not a constant. But uh, that's, that's quite a bit of generation. There's quite a bit of generation of money from a whatever the tax rate is per thousand, you know, on, so when we had a statistical reval and people's property went up, you know, 50 and 60 percent, their numbers jumped in the same manner. I don't think they lowered the rate, you know, per thousand. So, uh, well, you can do you can do revenue bonds for water versus geo bonds, but I think it's because of the issues with the other issues. But I'm just saying that, that, that let's, yeah, let's yeah, move on. But I think yeah. Okay. Um, but that number needs more. But it's this once again. It's not going to be the number that's yeah. to resolve all financial issues of the town. No, not, no. not so. Not at all. And we'll get to that. Okay. Um, the Public Works Department. Um, if you look at and Dave can come up and adequately defend it. This is the dep department that probably took the hardest hits last year in the budget cycle. Um, we made some calculated decisions. Now, Dave, you're seeing eight full-time. His middle number that requested was actually, he wanted to hire an additional two full-time people this year. Um, they do a wonderful job with the manpower. I've got it back down to eight, just so you know. Um, they also, um, you'll notice where he had 23,000 on sick leave. Uh, his, his union agreement is, is his employees have the right to buy back their sick leave, unused sick leave each year. Um, I've tried to look at a historical average. That's where I came up with my number. Um, so just so you know, there was thought in, in that process. Um, in all fairness, I could justify every number in here that he's requested. And snow removal, we hatcheted last year. We took a hatchet to it. Paving, we took a hatchet to it. I mean, those are probably the two big items that, that you have in there, Dave, which you agree. Yeah, that and the materials for the, uh, for the department as well. Um, snow removal, uh, where we had budgeted under line item 451, last year was 40000 That was a budget decision because we had um, 70000 and I've been on my prayer rug. So we've not had much snow this year, thank God. Uh, we're at 60,000. Um, paving, we could we could we could budget a half million dollars a year, and we'd probably be a little bit behind on paving as a pay as you go. Last year was a budget decision to take it to 125, but we're not doing much paving, are we, Dave? This year, one street will be doing two this year. Uh, even then, I still only have it at 250. 
um, sand gravel account, and that's more what material costs. Most of that is for sand and soil in the winter time, and the uh, we had some pretty uh, stiff increases on the salt uh, uh, last year and the year before. I can give you the exact uh, amounts on those. The uh, the uh, cost of the sand rose 12 percent in FY05 to 06. Salt rose 41 percent in FY05. That was one shot. We got a fax in February told us our salt cost was going up 41 percent. That's a state contract. There was an escalated clause in the state contract called the state. They were allowed to do it. So, and it, and it did go up again the following year. Uh, so, we're we're paying the pr price on these increases in sand and salt. Um, the other one, which is not a, a big increase, but to give you an understanding, tree removal. Um, we have a number of trees that need to be addressed, and we usually are trying to we stay within the, the line item, but we're, we're building a, a growing number of trees that are a, a risk issue. And if you don't, if you want to control some of your insurance costs, you might want to deal with some of the trees that could fall and create hazards for us. That's why we increased that another couple thousand dollars almost. The other thing is signage. And um, that is up five thousand dollars. If you look at a lot of our signage, it's worn out. It's so faded you can't even see it. And that's something that Dave and I have talked about. There's tremendous demands for updating our signage. What's the community center expenses? That's to operate the community center. Uh, in other words, the heating. Uh, any maintenance, buying all the supplies, the paper goods up there. That's not in their own accounts? No, the community center is somehow got, got placed in public works. This is not the senior center. This is the community center up on Judson. The oh, so they're closed. They're closed the closed building. The one that the one that we use like two offices in. No, uh, the one we use a lot, actually. Are we using it again? Well, we use it a lot. There's a lot of meetings going on okay. up, in that, up in that facility. Um, we have wastewater is up there. Um, we have Harbor Commission uses it, Recreation Commission uses it on a regular basis. We may also use it for the time being to allow renovations to go downstairs for the planning. We'll go up there and, and the planning uh, director so that we can do these things without working around employees. But it is used, a lot of volunteer groups, the library uses it for some of their summer programs is up in that building. So these buildings use a great deal. To give you the breakdown on that, there's $6,960 in heating fuel, $2,100 for roof repairs over the bathroom, $205 in radon testing, $635 in supplies. That's $9,900. And just so you know, we also have had all these buildings uh, radon tested. Uh, we had gotten out of a what? couple years we hadn't done it. Uh, we're supposed to test 10% each year. We hadn't done it in a number of years and we had to pay, play catch up this year, uh, but we are up to date. Uh, by state law, we're, we're supposed to test our buildings and submit a report to the state. We are up to date on that. Another uh, way by, by a state right. mandate? But <laughs> did you did you put, well, I'm just saying, did you, did you, are we putting that cost into a that, that's an request old, for that, reimbursement. That was, that was an old mandate we were that's, ignoring. That's, that's, well, no, but what I'm saying is, if, if if the issue is that they're saying communities ain't asking for reimbursement, you know, then I think we should look at anything that they've mandated we do and send them a bill and see how much they of it they give us back. You know, if they're saying there's a pool nobody's taking advantage of, we might as well try to take advantage of anything that they've mandated that they didn't fund. I don't know if it's as much of a pool that's left anymore as just trying to figure out the the, the the some of the monies that they they send us if they're going to give us any grant grant and aids. Dave, how, how often does it have to be tested annually? Ten percent per year now. Ten percent of the buildings. as long as ten percent of your your of the uh, of the areas is supposed to be tested each year. It's it's the cost is not bad when you do it like you're supposed to. It's when you kind of let it go. 
then you have a bigger substantially cost. Landfill operations, um, not much change there. Engineering services, um, landfill closure account. Ideally, the amount of money is four hundred thousand. We've kept it at one sixty-eight right now, and the landfill closure account is roughly two point eight million. Two point nine. Two point nine. Two point nine million dollars is in the landfill closure account. In, okay. in support of a fee that's going to cost um, uh, eight going to cost eight point five. Eight point five million. Um, you have a penny sale or something. If we um, now. You know, one of the things, you know, there were some tough decisions made this past year on usage of the landfill, and I guess they have really up there in the last month doing their testing yet in terms no, of that's that. supposed to be this week. <coughs> we'll see how much of an impact that change is, even though it was done three to four months into the, this fiscal year, into, into, into the calendar year. Uh, by reducing waste, but I think you've already you've seen. Well, we know from the traffic counts that were done uh, earlier in the year that there was a, uh, a substantial reduction in the amount of traffic that went in there. And just by the fact that we're not accepting the construction demolition, that means a lot. The, uh, the budget still is showing personnel is too full-time, and the landfill is only open part-time, so shouldn't that reflect somewhere out. No, I mean, I'm just trying to, well, I don't want to see us get to a financial town meeting issue when somebody says, you're not open all the time. Well, you know, the, let's cut a number. And, the, you know, it's... The thing is, yes, there are days that they come down and work at the Public Works Department, but there are also days that we leave uh, the operator up there and he'll be there all day because he has to haul handle the trash other material. Yeah. And every afternoon, uh, every even the days that we are closed, right, somebody has to cover. Uh, so we have to close uh, cover. Yeah. And what's also not reflected is that on Mondays we have to cover the trash in the afternoons. So that means the DPW person yeah. has to go up to the landfill. Well, I just don't want to so see. I think that that's yeah. just yeah, okay. I, I, I just, I mean, I think we have to have a justification why somebody's yes. going to say if your landfill's only open three days a week. And I think why? Okay, I just want to make sure because when somebody sees two full time. So what are they doing when they're not, you know, and the, I know we got to send somebody every day to cover material, and on Monday, because they work on a Saturday, somebody else has to do it. There's, there's also the fact that there are times when we've sent our whole crew up there. As you know, there's been... No, that's to do the right, the renovations and the yeah. swales and the that's roads right. and, and so forth. And so yeah. all, that, that's all done out of the DPW budget. Okay. It, it, is, it would be tough to, to capture it dollar for dollar. Okay. Um, and I think I think anybody who Dave has done a lot to make sure, and his staff has done a lot to make sure that we maintain the ability to have the landfill open by being responsive to addressing a number of concerns. Um, so I think that needs to that that's a lot of work is being done up there that people just don't see because they're back up in there fixing a lot of issues that have been neglected for a long time. Well, there has been a dramatic change in the landfill from what it was dramatic. Thank you. I just want, I wanted to make sure we have those numbers covered so somebody doesn't look at it that way. Yeah. And in maybe a different presentation so that somebody isn't inclined to try to make a cut is what I was saying. If we were showing that we had, you know, let's say two part-time here and then in, in your other operating budget. And I don't know how you do the numbers, but uh, to turn around and show that they were... Okay. Because we've got to cover, to cover the, their hours for all the, the time. The other big change in there is in the bulldozer account. Uh, I don't know why, but once again, we've been doing it for a long time, putting X amount of money for bulldozer repair in the uh, capital expense that shouldn't have been there. We've moved it to this line item and taken it out of capital expense. That's why that bulldozer account repair, that's our repair account for that. I, I really believe that that bulldozer repair should move to landfill operations. Well, it is. Well, I mean, okay, you, you're showing it's an operating expense, yeah, because that's... It, nobody understands the wear and tear on that machine, you know, up there moving uh, the trash around and, and taking care of that cover every day, and those uh, the conditions that it operates in, and not 
you know, conducive to having them <coughs> on lower ends and tracks and stuff. They wear, you know, quite rapidly, and it is a large expense. We are actually required to have two machines, and yep. we do have two machines. Yep. And the, our backup ma machine right now is in extremely poor condition. Um, it was operating in our backyard one day, and I thought we had a fire in the backyard. Um, <laughs> it's, it's really in bad shape. That's why uh, when we come to the capital uh, budget, you'll see that we are putting in for a, a new machine. But we do need to keep up the ones that we have, um, including our spare machine. Uh, moving on to building maintenance, that's one full-time person, one custodian person, and the maintenance labor, which is part-time, is a non-union position. Um, most of these are all uh, contractual increases. Now, I want to talk a little bit about operating expenses because um, <clears throat> we have been doing things that's something that's not correct, quite kosher with uh, use of gasoline and oil and fuel to fill uh, cars. Um, we are actually recommending buying a, a vehicle for this department and moving away from this individual using his own vehicle, which we have been paying, offsetting some of these costs, and I would just rather leave it at that And at this point. Um, street lighting has been moved over to this account because it really is a public works. Now, I know there's always been a lot of questions about the street lighting account. You're actually spending $128,000, and it may actually move up another couple thousand, but there, this is no slush fund as I've typically heard it referred to. It's $128,000 in street lights. Uh, Stormwater 2, that's the uh, compliance issue. <coughs> Rubberish, rubber, excuse me, rubberish, rub, rubbish collection and recycling. Last year you budgeted 509,000. I believe our, because this amount was approved prior to the extension of our agreement, which I believe was 569,000. We were $60,000 short in this line item, so we've got a hole in this line item right now in the budget. Dave budgeted 625. I was kind of optimistic at 600,000. Uh, this will be before you, maybe at your next council meeting. This is an item that, depending on the type of service, we think we're very comfortable with this number right now. Um, if you're agreeable to, to accept our recommendations, and if you're not agreeable to accept our recommendations, you might want to add $150,000. $150, hmm. I'm not trying to blackmail, but no. just, <laughs> just letting us know. Nice. <laughs> Uh, On-site wastewater management, um, as you all are aware with the change in the ordinance, we are utilizing uh, Mr. Lincourt's services to do this. Uh, this is a service that's being extended to the uh, non-wastewater uh, hard sewer line users. Uh, we are projecting, what, 20% of his benefit yes. and salary package cost is this $15,000 right now. Plus some other operating expense. Right. We do have a line by line breakdown so that we can create a budget for this account so that it's not one flat fee. There actually is a budget that has been put together for that. And I'm going to give you that. I would, I'm hesitant to put it this in here because it's going to get confusing as part of the financial town meeting, so I have lumped some it. But you will have a, a breakdown when we bring to you the wastewater budget. Last year, as you recall, the wastewater budget, which should not have been submitted as part of the financial town meeting package, got there, wasn't voted on by the financial town meeting, but it was mixed in. And this year, I've made sure that they have that has not happened. Isn't wastewater management going to be an enterprise funded it is an enterprise operation? Fund. It is an enterprise. Then it should not appear in this budget. No, it's, it, it, except right. for information. It was. Last year, apparently, it had been submitted prior to my coming, and it never left. So this year, it's not there. Um, it never had been until last year. Yeah, but I know it got it got in. It got there. So now the on-site wastewater management is a percentage of Mr. Lincourt's salary and office costs that are related to managing the program. The, of the, the new ordinance. Right. Of the is, new ordinance. is that a mandated 
an function. It's part of the ordinance. That's part of the ordinance that, that this council passed. Who recommended to the council? I wonder. I wasn't here. Neither was the Conservation Commission. It's Who? The Conservation Commission was proposing the on-site waste water. Let's go back and look at the Conservation Commission's budget. And we can find it. I can promise you they don't have that much. Um, is there any other? I mean, I've I've kept the capital issues to the end, so if there's no other questions, of Mr. Yeah. Uh, Webster. Uh, boards and uh, commissions and social services. The numbers that you're seeing under the social service agencies are the numbers that have been so far submitted to us. Um, and I'm just going to quickly comment. Newport County Mental Health Association has requested 19,000. We gave them 5,000 in the past. Um, it's my understanding that at one point we're giving them as much as 13,000. This is just a Solomon-like number I put there. Uh, and I will say, you know, it's, and the same thing with the visiting nurses. I've been a little Solomon-like, you know, I don't know what direction you want to go on that. Uh, the boards and commissions, the historical society, um, the, the, the change in any of this there's, um, is the Open Space Commission has some projects that they want to do. Uh, the support material is in your package. The Fogland Oversight Commission, which has not been in there in the past, needs to get GIS mapping done. Um, it is 15,000. At one point I had it down to 75. I put it back at the request of the chairman to 15,000. Um, it could be phased over two years, but I do know that's been a big issue for the Oversight Commission. Um, the Harbor Commission is here in, in this now. I've separated that a little bit away, put, trying to put all the commissions together versus having some of them scattered. The Tree Commission, or excuse me, the Recycling Commission is now in here versus being in the administrator's budget. <coughs> Library Services. Uh, right now, this is the amount of money that they have uh, requested. So going, back, going back to boards and commissions, the uh, Open Space Commission, uh, what's the reason for that? I have to go and check the, they've got some projects that they they want to do for the 19th. So that's, it's, in got, the back yeah, it's, it's in the back. It's in the back. Go back and do it again. I don't know if you want to move forward. You want to go look at the backup material. No, you can move forward. I'll look at that. Okay. Um, Senior Citizen Center. It's it's the difference in what the salary is. Just a difference in interpretation of what the, the salary increase should be. Um, the assistant director. That's grant money. Um, there's not a huge change in this particular budget, most of the salary. And they need to do some work on the building. That's the reason for the increase for $1,000. Okay. Um, recreation and Parks, and I know Mr. Cook is here to make sure that I treat his food fairly. Uh, what I tried to work, <coughs> excuse me, with the, with the Recreation and Parks Commission, Recreation Commission, is to try to do more zero-based budgeting. Uh, they did that. That's why some of their numbers have jumped, especially in salaries and expenses. And then I went and looked at some historical averages, and that's why where some of the adjustments have been made. Uh, their some of their salary lines go up because a lot of their salaries are tied to the minimum wage. So when a minimum wage goes up 25 cents, you know, it just causes a swing of all their salaries. And the um, I've also put some money in there for the summer uh, increase for the summer coordinator. Uh, that individual's not had an increase in a number of years. The other line item that is. Um, under recreational field care, which is the contractual lawn service, that item just went out to bid. They put twenty-five thousand. I think it might. I'm betting it's going to be closer to twenty-two thousand. Uh, other than that, it's pretty self-explanatory. Jack, do you have anything you want to add? 
Thank you, sir. And then we get into municipal capital services. And since the... Uh, we don't have a total. We don't have a total for that. It, 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 it trailed over to the next page. I've got to make a correction. Oh, if, right. you, you, if you go past capital expenses, you're going to see total recreation commission increase. When it printed up tonight, I discovered we, we were making some changes. Apparently, i got to do a cut and paste job later. It was 110. Appropriated last year request was 128. We're at 117 okay. in the budget. It's at the top of page 18. Paste it. Okay. Yeah. All right. Municipal capital services, and I'm going to ask Dave to come back up, and we'll just do this by department. Uh, the back of the material and all, Mr. Um, Webster's increases is in your is in your packet. Some of these are continuing agreements that we've already had in place, um, like sixth to seventh payment, that type of stuff. But I'll let Dave talk to those and some of the new items. Okay, the vacuum sweeper is uh, an existing machine where that's uh, payment six of seven. Uh, the bulldoze rehab, that's the account we talked about, uh, that we've moved that money over into the operating extent, expense because it's really not a, a capital expense. We're not buying anything. We're just maintaining the machine. Um, the bulldozer, this is for the purchase of the uh, a new shovel dozer for the landfill. It would be a five-year lease. Uh, the, I have checked these prices with the, uh, uh, the vendor who supplied the last two machines. So this would be an adequate amount. Uh, it would be nice to think that perhaps with the reduced operating hours at the landfill, uh, maybe this could be uh, the last machine that uh, we would have to buy. Uh, that's being a bit optimistic. But, but the, uh, so. that, that number would include the financing of it also? That is correct, okay, yes. Because we, we don't want to get into that one again. Yeah, we have put okay. in a, an amount for the okay. machine plus, plus the financing just like we recently did with the loader. Okay. Okay. Um, the next items are all zero because those were done this year. Um, the front end loader, that's the second payment. You can see that we budgeted 38000 uh, last year and the payments actually came in at $33,900. Um, this is, yeah, Dave, I just still didn't correct that mistake. I just noticed on the truck lift. Yeah, that that truck lift is actually the the entire amount. Uh, it should be forty seven five. It should be forty seven five to actually make the, the lift. Right now, we we have a mechanic working on fire trucks and our trucks. He has no lift. He has to you know everything is done from underneath. When you're ch changing a muffler system, or something, it's just not a it's not a safe operation. And we have a a car lift in our garage, which was something that was salvaged out of a garage. Uh, so it's an old used lift, certainly not capable of lifting anything more than a, uh, a car or a small pickup truck. So we really should have a lift over there for safety reasons in the garage. It would also allow us to take, undertake some jobs that we, have, six, seven years. that we have not um, taken on because of safety. So there is some benefit of having this. Uh, you'll see the Riverside culvert uh, in there. It's it's zeroed out. Uh, as you know, we if you recall, a, cu uh, a couple of years ago, we put plates across the road. Those plates are still in place over a failed culvert underneath Riverside Drive. At some point in time, uh, we will have to address that. Right now, the plates are holding up. That's why it was uh, put off. Um, Snowplow frame and sander. This is to put a... Uh, uh, snowplow and sander uh, into one of the three vehicles that we have, the three of our better trucks that are not equipped with snowplows and sanders. Uh, so during a storm we've got our three best vehicles and we can't really use them for anything because they're not equipped for winter winter operations. They shouldn't be. Excuse me? They shouldn't be. Oh, I 
I, I think they should be. I think we should I think be using them. One of the reasons we've gotten the longevity we've gotten from, from the vehicles we use as DPW vehicles is because that's what they've been used for. And we went to that sander fleet, and maybe we need to, you know, upgrade our sander fleet a little bit, you know, more, rather than take the apparatus that we use every day because they last us a heck of a lot longer when we don't put them out there doing as as well as you clean them and i know you guys do one heck of a job when it comes in you know after a, a snowstorm and clean the equipment to keep it as good as it is but you start to see you know the deterioration even on our plow fleet because of you know what sand and salt does to the vehicles that i i know i favor you know put more money into upgrading our sander fleet than taking our everyday vehicles and making them, you know, sanders. I th we've, we've always gotten that longevity from vehicles by not using them in those winter conditions. Beats the heck out of a vehicle. And the fact that we have that sander fleet that only does that, we don't have the front end issues, we don't have a lot of issues. And I, I, I just think we're looking for some higher maintenance costs, you know, down the road by by equipping our frontline vehicles, you know, as Sanders. I, I, opinion. I, 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 I know and I understand your, your point, but I just don't know that we have the luxury of having two separate fleets. If you look at our equipment inventory, we've got, we've got uh, some trucks with uh, 270, 290,000 miles. They're 16 years old. We're calling them our Sander fleet. Those are the trucks that we depend on to go out and clear the streets in the winter storm. And we're asking for trouble when you send a truck out that, that, that it's that old and with that many miles on it, we are going to have failures. Well, that's because we're buying our Sanders. We're, we're buying used oil trucks uh, with uh, 150,000 miles for $8,000 because we're only giving you $8,000 to do it. I think we have to have a recognition of where our mistakes are you know, in doing that, but I see, I see changing our everyday vehicles to Sanders as, as a mistake, it's, and it's going to cause us a, a, a different set of problems. I think we need to address that fleet problem. When I came on board here some 12 years ago, my suggestion was so that people would understand what we were using, and if you think you've got an old fleet now, you should have seen those old internationals before you got here, because every one of them qualified to have antique plates, and I, I said that's what we needed to do, was put antique plates on all of the vehicles that were of that age, so that when people would see the antique plate, when the plow was out there, saying, what's that doing with an antique plate? We had a mechanic who kept them looking good, but they were you know, exactly what they were. And I realized we've upgraded to having vehicles now that are in the 80s instead of having vehicles that were 60s. So, I mean, we've got a diesel fleet and so forth. But those so trucks also only so get... your suggestion is now is replace the normal fleet that he uses and take the fleet that we have and use them to replace the Sanders? No, I'm saying that where the, the Sanders should be, some of the Sanders should be upgraded but not taking our frontline equipment. No, no, take the frontline equipment, use them as Sanders and replace the frontline equipment. No, that's what we're going to end up doing is what I'm saying. If we start using them as Sanders, that's what we're going to do. And Dave, I, I sympathize with what you're trying to accomplish, but the budgets have never given you the kind of money you needed to keep you know, up with what we're doing. And I don't think putting plows on those front line, you know, uh, the two internationals uh, or freight liners we bought four or five years ago, those trucks are now what, about four years old? Five years old? No, they're even eight. older than that. Eight. Eight years old. Okay. We, we've gotten no, we've gotten eight years, we've gotten eight years out of those, out of those vehicles and they still look in real good shape and they're doing the job that needs to be done. But when we look at the miles we put on the plow trucks, to take a truck that has a higher mileage for the, for the amount of miles you put, and we've done a very good job in maintaining those vehicles that we use as plows, and we have not had a, a lot of major breakdowns during storms. And yeah, three storms we had last year, we, we did very well, no yeah. question. Yeah. I mean, a lot of it is a philosophical approach. Well, I, I understand, but, he, but what I'm saying is let's recognize the system we've used for a lot of years of keeping having the two separate fleets, we, we can maintain that system, but we've got to put the money in to that plow fleet because that's why we've gotten, I think that's why we've gotten the eight years. We'd be looking at probably, if we are putting plows on those frontline trucks, we'd be looking at replacing them now if they were doing both jobs. 
And the eight years would be replacing them. Instead of getting the 12 and 15 years, in we will ways, get out of them. Uh, with all due respect, we have to uh, yeah. just respond to the recommendations okay. of our public works uh, uh, chief. Um, I hope you will take Mr. Boland's comments under consideration and um, see where this takes us, because I'm sure there's going to be some additional reworking of the budget. So keep going. Okay, moving on, a one-ton roller. Uh, the reason, again, that is a one-year purchase, uh, not a two-year. The reason it was cut back is we do have a trailer uh, that we are currently modifying to uh, utilize to carry a roller. Right now, when our, when our crews go out to do patching, if we have any major patching, like where we've done catch basin repairs or pipe replacements, we're out there with a plate compactor or a hand roller uh, to, to uh, compact the patch in the street. It's just not a proper way to do it. Uh, you can see that you've got, uh, we have in there a 17,520 GVW uh, dump truck. Uh, that's to replace an existing uh, vehicle that's really worn out. Uh, it's, it, it, it says two year. That means that this would be a, a lease purchase uh, payments of 33,000 each year. It would be equipped with uh, uh, a plot on that truck. Uh, trailer, this is actually for uh, Mr. Martin. Uh, the trailer that he has is, uh, is, is in severe disrepair and uh, needs to be replaced. It's a trailer that he uses to go around and uh, uh, pick up all the trash at all the parks uh, as well as any of his other maintenance activities. And the three quarter ton truck is a two year uh, lease purchase uh, for a pickup for Mr. Martin. And that um, would clearly address a number of personnel related issues when he's off and we get complaints that he's using them. He's off. It's, it's created some problems. And, you know, Mr. Martin um, is eligible for retirement now. And we need to, we need to address this issue. Um, I don't think we'll be getting that same that have that same opportunity that we had with Mr. Martin. And the question is, is do we address it this year? Do we postpone it another year? That means in the other line items that we just made adjustments for and reduced, we're going to have to put more money back in there. So it's not going to be a, a clear twenty thousand dollar savings. It might be about a fifteen thousand at the most, realistically maybe twelve to thirteen thousand dollar savings. And that would be done over two years. Um, any questions for, for, for Dave? Fire Chief. Um, the first three vehicles where you can see we're in the midst of uh, a variety of, of cycle in the payments. Um, Chief, I, you know, and he can speak to this, but I will speak to it real quick. The Quint Fire Truck, I cannot disagree with the need for that type of truck. Uh, I know people say, well, you don't have that many tall buildings. I, if you've ever seen firefighters, and I've worked with a lot of volunteer companies, you can use that type of truck even in a single or two-story to get over and above the, the house if you have to and pour water into the house. Uh, there is one item that is not in here that the chief and I talked about today, uh, which I want to get let him talk about the equipment that we do have and the need for the rescue, which you've already heard that issue. We've got a rescue that's seven years old. We just put an engine in it. But I could almost argue we need three rescues now with the amount of service calls that we're getting. I, I would simply urge that we, we look at our capital uh, investment into the infrastructure of our equipment here. Um, one of my oldest trucks now is coming up on 21, 22 years old. And um, <clears throat> trying to get a reasonable replacement project where an engine should re be replaced I should be replacing one every 10 years, a rescue at least every four years, and needing to look at big ticket items such as a, a, as a quint apparatus and such. Um, the longer we keep putting these off, my fleet keeps coming up to age all at the same time. And I can see us coming to the point where the whole fleet itself is going to cause more mechanical breakdowns, more expenses on that end, and be looking to try to have to replace large amounts of apparatus at the same point. The time to try to spread it out is now to be able to spread those time frames out, keep the cost low to keep the fleet up to uh, up to snuff. Um, the rescue vehicle, as you know, 
we just spent that money on it. I, again, that the truck that is there is seven years old. It's it's in rough shape. It's tough. We put a new motor in to keep it going. It'd make a great backup truck now. Um, but again, if I'm going to replace the rescue, that truck at least is going to have to be on the year on the road for another year before I get a rescue in for that. So again, looking at that time frame to get it in, I can't just can't go out and just buy one. And when I look for that engine replacement, I did look to see if there were any out there that were available. I called a ton of manufacturers. None of them have them. They buy them up as quick as they come out. So again, I, I would urge that we can reconsider that. The climate vent system is the exhaust system, um, which would exhaust diesel fumes. Diesel fumes themselves are known car uh, carcinogenic. It is uh, an OSHA regulation or, or, or requirement, or I wouldn't say a requirement, but uh, a, a heavy suggestion that we put in those climate vent systems to remove the uh, diesel fumes from the from the structures. Um, which station? Right now, my only station that has it is the South End Station, Station 4, because that had the biggest bays. Uh, Chief Jack, when he was here, was able to acquire a grant for that to be able to get that done. I'm trying to look to get it into the other stations. The reason why I've not recommended it, um, you know, we've put the new software up at the fire department, I mean, at, at the call center to begin to determine where our calls are coming from as part of a discussion that was part of the comprehensive plan discussion about looking at one or two fire stations in the future instead of three. So I, when you're looking at that much of an investment, and if we can hopefully in a year or two come to some understanding where we would like to go for a, a structure like that, then we would make a decision. I mean, I don't disagree from a safety standpoint. It would be better to have it, but that's a lot of money to, to, to install at this point where we're looking at other issues. I have looked at grants for that, but those grants, uh, I, I only get several bites at the apple at certain grants that come out. The federal government puts out their guidelines for firefighters as to what I can apply for a grant. The last year I had gone to try to get an engine for us. I was not successful in that grant. I am trying to get another piece of apparatus for us in a current grant that I've applied for now. Um, Chief, I'm sorry, one question. Uh, yes. Um, am I correct that uh, if the rescue wagon knew one of five payments, if that were approved, and then we have a, um, a rescue vehicle, uh, we're in our fourth year, mm -hmm. that the existing rescue wagon would be kept as a backup or? Both. We, we will have one frontline vehicle that we, that's the one that you're seeing, um, four or five payments that's the vehicle we just received last year right. that would stay front line the current vehicle that is in the south end that we just put a new engine in yeah. I'd like to try to keep that as a backup vehicle and then replace that vehicle but remember it also took a couple years before we actually got that would be a backup vehicle but you're requesting a new vehicle so yeah so it'd be three, three. correct Okay, one one would be a res quote a reserve vehicle such as when the so one went down we one would have to borrow from right. another community. Well, that, was, that was my question. Yeah. Am I correct in saying yes. we have one you know the existing new one, this one, and a backup? That is correct. Okay. Um, one one other item that I had requested to put in here, and I would ask you just to think about it, is requesting forty thousand dollars for a billing software, which incorporates the current state of Rhode Island ambulance run report which is a patient record that is filled out and we go on every report doing that in electronic format and have that blending directly into our current billing software to increase our speed with which we can bill um, there is a company I'm looking at out of Massachusetts that is called AmbuPro that has given me a price including all hardware all electronics that we need for it, the software itself um, the cost on that is forty thousand dollars but they have spoken to me and, and given me a letter saying that they can pretty much guarantee that we would increase our rev current revenues by one third. Now, uh, what's the what's the annual licensing and maintenance fee on our forty thousand dollars software package? I could not give you that right off the top. Well, of my head. No, but that's this is the point. You know, I'm going to sell you something for forty grand, and then we're going to pay them four grand a year. You know, to uh, keep it up. Now there is there is. Didn't you, didn't you just do a? Um, 
Didn't we just approve a new software? The software that we just approved is the one that's going into the dispatch center for the dispatching. We have two sets of records that we have to keep. One is called ENFRS, National Fire Incident Reporting System, okay. where we have to report all our fire calls and our responses to the national network. That's the that's the form we're supposed to work. That's the form that I just asked. That goes into the dispatching software. That's part of that entire system. Okay. The other is the ambulance rescue uh, report, which, which is another one mandate. of them. Another one of them unfunded mandates. There you go. We this can a national. This a federal a national fire in, incident reporting system. We can we can choose not to use the national fire incident reporting system, but then we are ineligible for any grant that we may ever apply for. It's a require. It's it's a catch twenty two. Don't have to use it, but if you don't use it, then you're not going to be allowed. You'll, you're immediately disqualified for any grants. Is that a federal government organization? Or does Mr. Reed or, or Mr. Whitehouse know about this kind of thing? You know, a lot of this is, a lot of this is, you know, I know that it irritates everybody, but a lot of it helps for the justification of why your community should be eligible for a piece of equipment or for grant money. You know, it, we are in a very competitive situation, and this grant money is, is dwindling. And if this helps put us in a better line to get the grant money, then we need to do this. I mean, and that's what it boils down to. We, I know we hate it, but, you know, there are points that you get when, and Bob will tell you, there are a number of points that you get as a community that will get your grant application ranked higher. And we need to get every point that we can get to, to try to get grants. And this is one of the prices we have to pay. And, I mean, that's the best way of looking at it. I think you can look at it in a very negative or look at it in a positive light. I have no objections to getting every grant that we can possibly get. Um, is that, a, sorry, is that a request that you're recommending? It's, it was something Bob and I have had back and forth. It may come. It may come up. We're, we're okay. talking about this right now. We we actually and, it, and this is something I forgot to tell you. And I don't like making this type of mistake when we're going through his budget. We actually have put a few extra hours in hit, uh, Judy's um, salary account to take her to 40 hours, so that she can bill manually. But these additional what, dollars. But that's why Judy's there. That's that's why Correct. Judy's there is to bill as much as she possibly can. Yeah, you know, that that was the whole purpose right. of of actually hiring. You know, the, someone there part time and then ultimately full time was to start doing third party billing in that office for the ambulance. And she's doing a great job. And the reason why we're recommending the hours is to get more revenue, which will more than offset that. The idea with the computer equipment is, and, and Bob and I have not had enough time to discuss this, is I want to know if I'm going to spend $40,000 for a piece of software and $4,000 a year annual renewal, how much are they, how much is this really going to get in return for the, for the dollar? Is it going to generate, is it going to take us an extra, do, are we going to generate $10,000 more a year? Then it's not a great deal. But if, if they can say we can get four years, you need down. to know that's that's why that job was created in that. Oh, I know, and that's, and that's why. Was, that's why it was created part time and then extended to full time was to do that third party billing. Well, it's full time. Now we see. We have we have different levels of yeah. full time in town hall. <laughs> it is a thirty two hour. Thirty two hours. Yeah. Okay. We have full-time positions in ASME that are 40 hours, mm -hmm. and we want to increase those number of hours so she can have more time to do more billing. That's one of the reasons why we've also increased that line item for revenue. I, I was able to end the year. We had a computer the crash at the end of the year. I had to put on extra hours to recoup the, the, the billing that was not done. By the extra hours that she was able to end, we did see a significant increase in our revenues coming in because she was able to devote specific time just to do in that billing. Chief, yes, sir. You mentioned that if you uh, receive this forty thousand um, dollar program, you'd be able to increase your billings by a third. What are you doing? Right now, we're standing. Uh, I think the estimate that Mr. Steckman has put forth for next year is uh, two hundred ninety thousand. So you could bill almost hundred thousand dollars. Well, I, I, I would like I would like them to be able to tell me how they came to a figure. Yeah. You know, not knowing what I'm billing. This is this. A lot of this is done on history with other departments and such. Mm -hmm. The quicker we can get our billing into the companies that reimburse us, the quicker we are reimbursed. The longer that time yeah, comes, it slows it yeah, down. Qu quicker, quicker is not more money. 
quicker. I mean, we get it quicker. But I mean, you know, in in the situation we're in, we got the money goes back into it. We're right back to it comes into our general fund, and then we're fighting to get it out of the general fund into the budget for well, the following year. Actually, you know. actually, it is reflected in a revenue line item, and yes. it has been increased, and that's yeah. been a difference the way it, that that over okay. it used to be yeah. having been done. Um, I think that's why the chief and I need to have some further discussions because I would like them to take. They may be able to do a sample. It might be an easier yeah. process. Well, what I'm saying is, if we have somebody who's really, that yeah. really yeah. Needs, needs to be looked yeah. at. Yeah, I mean, I, I think it, it will fly yeah. at this point. Yeah. But, um, the the one-third statement is a wonder, is a wonderful statement, but in, unless they know what we're missing, I don't know how they can generate that number. If we had another time, Mr. Bull, I could. I, okay. have the, I have the answers I could give you for that one. Okay. Um, if there's nothing else with the chief, uh, the police department. Thanks. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, um, chief. The police department re requested three cars. I reduced that to two. I think the fleet is now primarily caught up to where it needs to go. Um, under the town administrator, you know, we desperately need to air condition this building. This running multiple units, and we can't. Am I missing the police department? Okay. Uh, that's nineteen. Just the cars. No, Just the okay. cars. Okay. Now, it is miserable to work in this building in the summer months and to be productive. Uh, and I cannot believe that by the time we replace window units and the way these unit, union, units use energy, that in the long run we can't save money. Um, and I do believe that we have a responsibility to provide a least reasonable work conditions for our employees. Uh, and anybody who's been in my office in the summer months knows I have to turn the air conditioning unit off so I can talk with people. You've got the same problem here. Enough said. It's That's a working number right now. Boulder Marsh Grant, this is in relationship to the $300,000 grant that I wanted to start putting money aside to do the match. It would be the hope that we would be able to go out to third parties uh, to seek funding, but that is a number that I think we should put in there. The last, and this is one that's, I guess it's a, a it's a philosophical approach, the Cassett Hill Cemetery Commission. Uh, they've been wanting to build roads. Last year this amount was in there and it needs to be corrected. It was taken out of the budget. This year I'm recommending half at this point, this is a number I have no problem recommending it be reduced. I know that the ladies and the, the members of that commission probably want to hang me as I say that. This is very much like an enterprise account, and we have over the years been doing these sorts of things, and I think we should be saying to them, frankly, they should be including in their burial plot expenses to cover the cost of roads. And they want to open up, see, they want to open up more places. And this, I think, is getting ready to the point will be the last section of, of available space for plots up there. Uh, now, this is one of these unfunded liabilities that you have waiting for the town somewhere in the future when the last plot is sold because there's not enough money in their reserve fund to pay for perpetual care. Uh, they have a they have a fund up there right now, and I'm going to say it's roughly about four hundred thousand dollars to, and that's you know they'd have to get ten percent minimum return a year, ten to twelve, to be able to, to offset the cost of operating it. Um, Jump bonds. Yes. <laughs> She was trying to push one on me last time I was in here. A little too soon, Ann. <laughs> just dying to get in there. <laughs> there are people dying today that never died sorry, before. Sorry, sorry. Uh, about the GIS, is, when is that going to be requested? I think we put that back in there. It was in the uh, one of the uh, the fog lands. Fog just, land. that, that GIS mapping was just the fog lands yeah, beach area. Fog fog that's not the overall town yeah. GIS mapping. On our request, we would put in um, as a reminder $9,405.098.943. Actually, that money should be there because there were three payments made 
into that account. And right now, I've got a discussion with the treasurer. Somehow we've lost a year of the monies that were set aside for the GIS mapping, which would have taken it to roughly $30,000. And if I can't get the money figured out where it is, we're going to be putting that back in. There was $9,000 that may have not been carried forward in one of the years. And it's been, mis you know, not misplaced, it just went back into the general fund. The surplus. Yeah. So that's not been forgotten. Okay. Uh, it would be in capital or it could be a one time expense in planning. One of the things I've talked with, with our new planner, he has uh, some outstanding uh, working relations with uh, MIT, which he's a graduate of, and we're looking at seeing what we can work with them through maybe an internship project with their GIS mapping system that uh, may address some of our issues. So I would hope to have some clearer answers in a month or so. Um, the last is the Parks and Recs. As you well know, I've been working with them and trying to come up with some capital expenditures. Um, I have, under their original budget, or it's in the materials in here, they chose one, two, three, four, and I tried to give them as many ones and twos as that they wanted in each one of these areas. Um, I, Jack is welcome to speak to any of this, but they do a good job. I don't think anybody takes that away from them. Um, Now the question comes is where do we get to where we need to go? And I just want to give you something real quick, two things. First of all, I want to give you where other communities are in their health care insurance payments. So you know where we are versus where our sister communities are. There is one mistake in the information that, that I submitted. Uh, I think they moved on other KK should be 15% for employees hired after uh, December 9, 2005. I haven't quite figured out how they got it. I think it's July 1st. These guys love the small font, huh? Oh, no. Oh, yeah, don't they have a magnifying glass? Oh, man. So all the details fall out. <laughs> Can't you see it? Yeah. <laughs> it's right there. Um, they do have high scripts on those glasses. You know. <laughs> this is arguments for my eye doctor why I need try. <laughs> These are scripts. Thank you. I'm going to need that one, one, please. So when I, uh, you see a line item for tripodal, you know what that's about. <laughs> Right now, um, where we're at is we're showing up about a 1.339, almost 1.35 uh, increase over last year. If we followed the formula that I think has been followed very often in the past, a 5.25 increase in the tax rate would be 618,000. Right now, we have possible in fee increases of 151, and that's very preliminary. That's a low number. Um, some of that is looking historically how number revenues have grown. And our current shortfall is 569,000 or five, almost 570,000. Now, how do we cover the shortfall? I'm not recommending this. I'm just throwing out ideas at this point. Uh, one is get rid of the truck lift. As I, I think I've talked to some of you on an individual basis, it's very difficult to cut a lot of this out. I can cut more out of the budget and, and examine line items and do thousand dollars here, a couple thousand dollars here, and I can probably find a lot of money. Don't misunderstand me. But last year's budget uh, was a calculated decision that somewhere along the line we have to come and address some issues or we're going to be looking at cutting services and we when we cut services last year essentially by not paving 
this year. Um, doing away with the rescue vehicle, new rescue vehicle, doing away with air conditioning, doing away with Boulder Marsh Park money, doing away with the 18.5 for Pecasset Hill Cemetery, doing away with maybe portable bleachers at Pecasset, but buying um, bleachers for Town Farm, but doing away with the fencing down there. Uh, town Hall maintenance, uh, we could just build a small office for the new planner and just let things go as, as we've always done in, in Town Hall and not re replace some windows that definitely need to be replaced. Uh, building and zoning, not hiring the full-time zoning inspector and taking the full-time and by the way, that one part-time position that is over there right now had been talked about and had been approved to be a full-time position, but we've only plugged a part-time person in there. What position uh, is that? What position is that? That's over um, the building department. Building department. There is one and a half people there right now. Uh, there's a full-time person and a part-time person. Kelly is the part-time person, if you've ever been in there, uh, Mr. Costa. Oh, are you talking about a clerk or are you talking about an inspector? A clerk. Uh, a clerk. clerk. Okay, the only one I ever see in there is Jody. Well, there is a part-time. Is Gareth still here? She's still She's she works, Gareth, what, uh, 20 hours or 18 19, hours? 19. That's why you ain't seen her. Yeah. She works, she works 19 hours. You come in the other 19. Yeah. <laughs> I'm always behind. <laughs> she's, at, she's basically in uh, uh, all day Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Um, the litigation account, you know, we could keep our fingers crossed and hope it's a good year. <laughs> I say that with all sincerity. I know. Uh, the elimination of the fire marshal position and just continue to do what we've done in the past. Uh, hydrant services, cut it back to what we have paid historically. Uh, reduction in paving back to what we did this year. Take the take the gamble that the snow removal, we still don't get that much snow and um, and obviously we're gonna be talking to you possibly some savings with the trash service if we did not want to do one of the options that was originally discussed. And that's assuming you're agreeable to amend the um, original request for proposal. By the way, we have talked with the town attorney about already. You know, you'd be seeing potential savings of about four hundred fifty-seven thousand uh, dollars, which would obviously make the five hundred seventy thousand not so bad. But there's a lot of good things there. Um, now the question then comes down to where do we, how do we get this money? Where's the revenue going to come from to help offset this? We can do that discussion at another night, or we can continue to do it now. We've been here for two and a half hours tonight. We're missing the President of the United States on Iraq maneuvers. Been out of the press all day. Hey, bud? Been out of the press all day. No surprise there. No surprise. Whatever he says tonight, you'll hear a hundred times tomorrow. Yeah. So. I just want you to know I'm patriotic. That's all. <laughs> You're lucky to get out of here. I'm, I'm inclined to think that uh, we have already scheduled another budget discussion for the 31st of, for work. 29th. 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 Um, when's the presentation to the, uh, when's it got to go to the budget committee? Uh, I believe the date is uh, January 17th. Uh, last year you, you know, one of the problems Last year we just submitted the budget just to meet the charter you met the, uh, and well, continue to work on it. I, I understand, but I think that that caused a few problems because when the budget got submitted and we wanted to talk, the budget committee is saying you gave us a budget and now it's our turn to. So I thought we no, had I to just, get it. I think no, I think overall. It's a work in progress oh, throughout. Okay. Well, I mean, just so you know, the school department is following. Uh, they agreed what, to that. The school department I, has, is okay. submitting a budget. Um, saying, and I, and I know that the two school committee members here, is that it's been reviewed by the school committee and it is being submitted with the understanding that additional recommendations will, will be, be made. forthcoming. Okay. Last year what you did was you, you directed me or allowed me to work with the budget committee and we worked together in coming to a, a compromise. Um, I believe that 
we can handle a budget increase up to 10 percent. Assuming that the council is willing to address fees and also address how we account for revenue in the budget process where it is typically not budgeted but if there are revenue um, funds that the money goes in and then goes to the general fund. Well, I don't think you're right on that. I don't know. Because if you address fees, those fees will be not going to the accounts. They will be going into the general fund. Oh, correct. Okay. And we're not... looking at a we're looking at a fiscal year 2007-2008. Those fees will be going into the general fund 2007. Right. To be used 2008 2009. So they'll be available as the surplus builds up 2008 2009. That is, that, that is absolutely correct. Okay. But from a, uh, an accounting standpoint and a budgetary standpoint, uh, what you're doing is, is reflecting, and it, it varies depending on the year. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to use a number of 1 million just for the sake of arguing. Instead of showing that, as revenue line items and doing and getting these budgets where we're actually showing revenue to come in versus revenues expenditures going out. It is a better way of accounting and budgeting. I know historically we have always done it this way. I know the auditor and the new auditor and I have talked about this. For instance, we do not reflect certain monies in a liquor licenses which we call account number 101-521 is not reflected in the revenue of the budget, but is a line item that the money comes into that line item and then goes into the general fund, just like you said, which has allowed us year after year to, use the surplus. to, do, to do the surplus. But if we moved away from that practice, we could also start moving away from the practice of using carry forwards and getting a more accurate reflection of it's a different way of budgeting and I no, but Glenn, I think I think the point is if we need to generate an additional five hundred thousand dollars this year, it isn't going to get done by the increase of fees. This year's numbers have to be reflective of what that what you're going to generate in the old sense. Because whatever fees we decide to increase to help offset where you want to get to isn't available until next year. It cannot be it cannot be used to plug the number for that you're putting in the budget this year. Well let me let me, let me, let me do that. figures are as of last year, two thousand and six. Correct. That's what we operate on. Yeah. We don't have a current process of that you describe here are the revenues coming in this year um, and we can tap the it entire system statewide doesn't operate in that fashion <coughs> so um, I'm not certain we can with we can stand a budgetary increase of 10 percent well I I'll would love where but I do think there's some figures that are missing I think Jim I, um, uh, Dave Robert should do some modeling the same way he did as to what our assess what our what increase in assessment? increase in assessments from last year to this year based on construction. That might help the situation. And he is he is getting ready to start doing that. I, I would because it is a late hour, I, you know, I would rather come on back and discuss oh, the revenue is on, the okay. on the on the 29th no, no, no. and you show you what We're I'm talking about. about the on the and I'm not We're saying make this change what in one year. In I'm saying way. to phase this change way. in there will be so increase. that it would be a new approach versus how we've done it because I understand it's going to be a challenge to phase it in all at once. The first year of a could not take effect until yeah, next year. Yeah. The increase I mean, is on the way. We operate we audit the numbers that are year I understand. The fee structure base could not take effect until next year. I'm, I'm well aware of how, how it's okay, we'll, working. Okay. No, I'm aware about it. Um, We're talking about but I, I, uh, I think it's very helpful um, because I think we, I don't think we can go with a 10% increase. And bringing it back, at least identified 
some areas to cut. Right. Well, I, it would certainly, you know, as no, I... We will, or but, but a, cap, a cap is based on, on last year's levy. The cap is based on the levy from last year. Yes. The, what, the ability, the rate will be set on the ratable property. No, so it's two different numbers we work off of. Yes. But the assessment, they allow... Yeah. Um, uh, because if the assessments get increased by a very small percentage, which is allowed in order to do that cap calculation. Yeah. But Dave Robert, we all struggled with that last year. Yeah. Oh. Well, we changed it last year. Remember, we, yes. we also changed our approach last year, yeah. which was we had never factored in Starwoods the way we have done right. before. Yeah. So that was a change. Yeah. And. In, in, what, it's in, the same thing as what I'm recommending is a change that I think is going to take two or three years to phase in. Ex exactly, and that's why the increase, I think I agree with Louise, the increase can't be as, as big as you're saying because we haven't got the ability to use the funds that we would have in the following year. Should you do the fee increases to, to do your offset, that would show us in next year where there would be that pool of money that could go back, could feed back in and keep the uh, the tax rate right. at the lower number. That's the those same thing of applying. And, and it's something that we've talked about and haven't gotten to. Those fees help build the surplus. So that in a subsequent year, they the, the, offset. But the offset, but from the surplus. Please understand if and why don't we discuss this another night? Because I I think it's it's all right. We'll, we'll uh, approach the Budgeting. Yeah. yeah. Um, and as long as the budget committee, I, I know last year that they did. It was they. Uh, well, I think we should we should send them the budget then with the same proviso that this yes. is we well, will be continuing. Yeah. The so they're getting it anyway. Yes. Yes. It will be until probably yeah. two weeks before we go. Or one week before we'll, we'll, we'll have a meeting next week, obviously. Uh, next Tuesday night, which will be the probably the, the night before we submit the document. Uh, I understand Mr. Costa will not be able to make it. I don't know if he's extended the request to the other budget committee members, but I understand he's, he will not be here. Mr. Costa. Costa, excuse me. Excuse me. Got it. Uh, no, because I'm asking Mr. Carter to look at uh, reducing the number of meeting nights uh, since the budget is being packaged a little bit differently and also to, I, I'm not so sure, I'm just going to ask them to, to consider cons reducing the number of nights and also not to have the, the, um, the walkthroughs by the committee members on weekends, but to do it during the week, which makes it easier for the staff. Yeah. Can I ask you a question about revenue? Is anyone talking about this next time? It is, the thought just occurred to me, is it possible that we're headed for a crisis should revaluation come up again and property values go down, what's going to happen to our tax rate? It goes up. It goes up. Yeah, goes up. Phenomenally, right? If, yeah. if the market has been as bad as... <laughs> That's a nice word. That's a nice word. <laughs> nice well, word to use. Well, the reason I mention it is there's nothing wrong with increasing fees whether we use the money or not. It'd be nice to see taxes go down instead of up. And that's why, I mean, I think we need to take, I mean, I think we need to take a look, lovely, look at fees. I have one more thing to hand, hand out to you. I, uh, I know that counselors Aruda and Edwards were last night at the school board hearing. Uh, this is a PowerPoint presentation copy that I'd like to give you. If you want copies in, I've got copies for you guys, too. Uh, so you have this as part of the school. Want a clean copy? No, no, thank you. <laughs> One mock up's thank enough. You. <laughs> thank you. I thought it was uh, very enlightening in terms of the challenges that they have to. It's from uh, State Land Use. Is there a. Dinner uh, reservations have been made. Uh, how many people are going to go to the four o'clock workshop uh, for the interlocal trust? No. I'm going to go. I'm going to go when Paul goes. I'm going to put you in that. I don't have you in on the.